Is this session 39? I should have checked. <laughs> Before I believe it's very nice. It okay. is. Hey. hey, welcome to session 39 of Outlander Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. Let me put in the scene. Welcome, everyone. Hi. It's, Hello. It's good Hello. to have you back, Matt. Yeah, if to, to anyone who is watching or does watch in the future, I am back, my loyal fan base. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you all have desperately missed me for two months, but of course, assuming that uh, um, no additional tragedies strike your family. Right, right. Which, which, given the the track record, it's I'm waiting for like I don't know my my character sheet to just like delete uh, <laughs> my computer to be like nah it's it's time and your just to stop uh, your internet uh, dies my dog forever. to like just full tackle my desk and send everything out the window <laughs> uh random lightning on this cloudless summer day anything at this point what god have you angered uh, most of them if the <laughs> professor is anything to go off of <laughs> Okay. Jesus, Buddha, the whole Hindu super team. I just made everybody <laughs> mad. <laughs> They're all out to get me. <laughs> this flying spaghetti monster. Um, so, since you missed the whole Orm Pinard thing, I'm just going to yeah. give a brief recap that includes last session and the one directly before that. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the... Uh, the gist of it being that uh, the party guided by Saskarin headed to the east um, towards the place where Saskarin said that uh, Tinhart was hiding, which happened to, to coincide with the place where Orm the Book was claiming that uh, uh, Jamuel's home was, one of the many doors that lead to his uh, uh, magical tower. On the way, uh, you were stopped by a wyvern whose rider delivered a message to Pontifex. And we're going to actually open this session. Uh, I didn't change the music. Uh, with a flashback to that moment and actually delivered the letter to Pontifex. <laughs> so we, we can resolve that because I, I skipped over that okay. when, when it actually happened. Yeah. Uh, so we'll get to that. <laughs> I know um, this one of the person was driving crazy by it. <laughs> <laughs> um... And then you made it to uh, this one wooden door and its frame uh, just in the middle of nowhere. And uh, once you, you've entered it, you, you showed up in this, uh, in this tower uh, that wasn't physically in that spot. It's unclear where it actually is. But it was you were in a room that was full of doors and you were greeted by a, a projection of Orm Tinart with whom you had a lengthy discussion uh, as you were... Uh, he insisted on wanting uh, to be given the Outlander's Guide to the Daria. Uh, he was willing to trade for it. He was willing to fight you for it. Um, but as you brought up multiple reasons why this wouldn't help him, uh, mainly the fact that the guide itself is actually for the most part blank now, uh, telling him about the soul of the dog and that now lives in it, uh, and a few other things eventually convinced him to uh, leave you alone, and actually even show you around. Um, you learned the secret to Jamuel's, uh, I'm doing little quotation marks with my hands, immortality, uh, which involves uh, creating a lot of uh, extra bodies for himself that his soul can return to whenever something happens to his uh, current living body. Uh, and Jamil himself was in that room, just uh, uh, unable to wake up because of Orm's uh, tempering. So you found Jamil, technically. Uh, you found Tenar, who is no longer going to uh, bother you, at least so he says. And you have fired Casimir. He deserved it. <laughs> he that sure was the thing did. I missed. Like, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt, but what what caused this Casimir animosity with Pip thick? Like, what did he mess up? He, that must have been in the session before. He must have really I, messed up. Pip hired him to come help kill Orm, <laughs> but then we made friends with Orm. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> so so Casimir. Yeah. 
<laughs> it was really framed as if like he royally messed up like the one job he was given and you're like we no longer yeah, want nor need it. you <laughs> fair enough Pip also didn't want to pay for the boy back yeah that's true so, so the next suggestion was to dump his ass and he did <laughs> Another <laughs> After being, giving a very lengthy exposition and like it, it, very lawyered up document. <laughs> <the professor. laughs> this is how you remove someone from service. <laughs> uh, in addition, you have learned the reason why Ormtin Art wanted the guide in the first place. He explained that uh, uh, he, he claims that he, Ormtin Art, was the first person to discover Ladaria, not, not Jamil Fleetfoot. And that Jamil basically stole his discovery, stabbed him in the back, and never credited him for it. Um, and the Tin Heart planned to get his hands on the guide once it was fully written and add one sentence to it at the beginning that uh, uh, mentioned that mentioned Jamil's friend and thanked him for his assistance. Uh, ultimately, you have left the tower with. The book still on you, uh, having made possibly the friendship of uh, Orm, uh, Tenart, and Saskarin, and also having gotten your hands uh, on an orb that belonged to Jamuel that would let you, that allow you to track down his belongings, you know, of two of them, one being the uh, Gatlander's Guide to Ladara itself, and the other being the staff uh, uh, that he uses to cast magic, which Saskarin had thrown into the sea and it's currently very far, lost somewhere uh, beyond the peninsula. Um, on the way back, Alex unlocked the secrets of the of his own spellcasting focus, the leaf of Vakanath that uh, uh, his father had left with him, and he managed to summon a tower. Fun fact! <laughs> Matt had picked that spell on level up. <laughs> and I had to when message I level... him and be like, mm, yeah. Can you change? <laughs> when I hit level 5 wizard, I was like, okay, well, I get two spells. What would be like <laughs> a really cool one that would be really on theme for the professor? <laughs> having elven property and all of this stuff. I was like, oh, this is great. I've never <laughs> taken this on a character. <laughs> she messed me so... Could you, like, By the time I not? saw it on his sheet, I had already ma made a map on TTS. I had planned this from the beginning. It was all set up, and I was like, It'd be Wah. so funny if you just didn't catch it, and I was there for the <laughs> session. Like, oh, yeah, everyone, I found out there's no thing. Zoop tower. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then I can do that. Oh, oh yes, me, your father. We both figured it out. I just <laughs> forgot. <clears throat> that was hilarious. Uh... Right, so this this tower being uh, having belonged to uh, to Arin Moyer, um, you have explored it a little bit. You found a letter addressed to Talix um, that uh, explained a little bit uh, uh, about what Arin has been up to, and uh, you spent the night inside the tower. And at some point, you were interrupted, or rather, you realized you were all dreaming about uh, a moth. A giant, colorful moth. And as you started to realize you, that you were dreaming and you tried to look for a, for a way out, eventually you all woke up. And everything was fine. Back in Simlilon, you spotted a red beak flying over the city. Uh, and you, you chased after it uh, um, I, I, until you found some Etarava that are camped uh, at the very boundaries of the colony, not not hiding from the colonists in the slightest. And you've heard from Vajra and Pedrick that uh, uh, they have uh, come to announce their new peaceful intentions to uh, to the colonists, and the governor even uh, showed them around, gave them a little tour of the place. Um, they know about uh, you having defeated the one who stares and they're planning to return to the to the jungle uh, and you have warned them about the fact that the gnomes are planning to build their uh their railway through it uh but they don't seem particularly concerned about it they, they think they can take on the gnomes uh the session ended on uh, uh talix investigating the silver Claw guild and learning a few more things about his father and uh brooke 
heading off to meet this fur furbolg cleric that he has been hearing uh, so much about, uh, um, discovering that uh, he is someone that Brooke used to know. And uh, we're going to start with that. Let me bring the map of Simlielon. Uh, anything I forgot to mention? Nope, I think you did already oh, well. Oh, I'm not assuming you know. Hold on. We have a letter to deliver. We can start with that. And... Where's the pretty one? There it is. Okay, so, flashback to uh, three or four days ago uh, when you guys were on the way to Jamiel's Tower. Uh, when... Uh, a a uh, VIP Worldpoint courier has uh, brought a letter to Pontifex, uh, which I am now going to give him. Ooh. Here you go. If you could read it out loud for everyone to I hear. love letters. Uh. <laughs> I do. I How do you what? How do I make a... What? 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 Okay. what? Uh, I was wondering how to how to make the the thing like big on your screen oh, where it's like oh. a easily legible thing and it's it's all. Mm. Uh, Happy, it's Grangina. I delivered your message. Here's the reply. A little paraphrase because I don't remember every word perfectly. Deal with it. Uh, quote unquote. I know what your book says about me. Regardless of your opinions, I hope you and your companions can set aside any concerns about me and take my request seriously. I care for the well-being of all humanoids, and that is why putting an end to this situation is extremely important." End quote. Then he said about your question, quote, those, are, those who are unable to dream may never see the gods, but the gods still see them. That is what I believe, even if some don't agree. End quote. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So anyway, sorry for being such a pain. You guys are cool. I tell you to stay out of trouble, but I know that it's not going to happen. Tell Brooke I said hi. Uh, this is message to the wolf? Right? I think so. That's what she's saying, that I delivered your message. It was the message to the wolf, right? Mm -hmm. the, the letter isn't specifying, but you oh. figure as much. Yeah, yeah, that's what I remember. Okay. Uh, hey, Brooke, uh, Green Gina says hi. Are you going to answer her back? <laughs> eh, I mean, I feel like I could, but at the same time, I'm not sure if I want to have, like, an open mode of conversation between me and the gnome. Mm. Well, if you decide on saying hi back, uh, if you decide on sending a letter, tell her I said hi back. Yeah, you convinced <laughs> he pulled out his parchment probably while everyone was like exploring the the tower and stuff and after Pontifex looked through the books of of Arin or yeah of Arin's uh uh like saying that he found connections between the arcane and the divine and all that Pontifex is gonna take some time in the study uh, mm -hmm. and write out a very lengthy Brooke says hello <laughs> But just like super long and unnecessarily. <laughs> you describe the color of his hair at dawn yeah. when the rays of sun. The third shine wrinkle of them. his brow almost seemed to overlap the second wrinkle of the same brow as he uttered a series of words formed by consonants and the vowels that I shall never forget until the day that I forget about the words that he said. <laughs> it just. <laughs> It's really linked, and at some point it just cuts off, like, not mid-sentence, but, like, mid-word. Uh, and it just has, like, dot, dot, dot with, like, a little arrow on the corner. So, please we'll flip over to the back to continue. <laughs> and then, like, continues where the word left off, and eventually, at the very end, it says, So, to paraphrase, Brooke says hi. <laughs> <laughs> and I know all the words perfectly. <laughs> Do you want? Do you want to send her some of your hair? Uh, of my I hair. I have some. Uh. Oh, that sounds fairly 
practical? What could go wrong? You just send a woman your hair. I think that hair is for your use only, Pip. Okay, I'll keep it. Are you sure? Going once? <laughs> Going twice? I just don't think I've ever seen someone send someone else hair. Going twice and a half? And seeing how bad the last conversation seemed to have gone, I'm not sure if sending a piece of hair is the right thing. Going twice and three quarters. <laughs> slap okay, a no slap hair. a stamp on that baby. <laughs> <laughs> or my favorite part. And yeah, he'll he'll roll up this thing. Is this a, a completely lengthy and like written to be as annoying as possible, uh, followed by a TLDR at the end? Uh, Brooke says hi, and we'll mail it. <laughs> Just see what comes of that. Incredible. If uh, I get to keep this letter, of course. Yes. <laughs> This, this For goes your in the old purposes. <laughs> Who are you after? Oh, perfect. I have to put it away in my new filing cabinet. Okay. Um. There is one more thing I need to mention. What is it? What is it? I'm forgetting. Ah, I'm, I'm remembering. Um, I think I mentioned it in a previous session, if you watched it, but Pontifex is uh, um, figuring out something new about uh, the magic wand that he has. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw. Is it to, uh, am I to take it that he has already figured that out? Uh, by now, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so it is available. Awesome. awesome. Yep, I got it. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. Now we can move on to Simleon. I did have a quick question. Yes. Um, this uh, this wizard tournament thing that's uh, that's coming uh, tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? Uh, do does Pontifex, like, know about this event, like, historically or anything? Like, what it entails? Is this, like, wizard combat? Or is it, like, a series of, like, tasks that we're assigned to do? Or, like, what, or, like what, does he know anything about this? Um, tournaments like these, he would know, are held uh, across most of Elin Arden. Uh, he wouldn't know the details of this one, but... Uh, <laughs> um, Today's a good day to ask. Okay, okay. Uh, like, they needs... vary. There's not, like, a recurring mm -hmm. theme. He needs to okay. sign up for it. Of course. Uh, he needs to bring the coupon. I uh, always have the coupon on the hand. But okay, perfect. Okay, just making sure that... Uh... <clears throat> also, um, I still have Faroom, yeah? My horse? Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, making sure, sure that nothing like... Oh no, when we got sent to the in-between realm or something, horse is gone. Cool. We brought the object the horse into the tower and now it's part of the tower. We can't <laughs> take it out anymore. It is technically not a creature <laughs> and it is technically a vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Pontifex sees it. No, okay. he loves Farum. He is a good boy. Um, Talix is at the Silver Claw Guild. Brooke is at the Dragon Wagon. At not on top of the Dragon Wagon. Eh. Yeah, In. good enough. In. Uh, and we'll get to the others. The others are Schrodinger's player characters. Oh, I forgot. There was, sorry, there's one more thing that I was... Uh, 
I, whenever I was watching the VOD, I was like, this this might be a cool, like, foreshadowing line. Was uh, whenever we came back to Simlielon, uh, and there was, like, a person riding a wyvern, like, over the city. Uh, am I remembering that right? Did I understand that right? When? Uh, when we came back here to, I think it was at Simli Elon, uh, like towards the later half of last session. It was a red uh, Like, Oh, it was a red beak. Oh, I thought it was someone on a wyvern. Like we a remember big the wyvern because wyvern. they passed by a plaza and there was a bard telling a tale and it was an illusion of a wyvern that he had created. Oh, okay, okay. Never mind. <clears throat> My throat isn't really working with me today, so I, I hope I can do this. <laughs> it's not very good. You're doing good. Ah, uh, no, no, I'm not. Ah. Uh, we're going to go right back to Brook. So. Oh, I am missing something. I am very ready for the session. Ah, uh ah. -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, I got it. A lick. Ooh. Brooke, uh, you are faced with a face that uh, you've uh, uh, seen in your dreams sometimes, but you never thought it would be ever possible that you'd, that you'd see again for real. Uh, parts of him haven't changed. He's still wearing a, a set of goggles over, uh, pulled up over his forehead. Uh, though it seems to be a, a new one, a different one. Um, he, his hair has grown a little longer, but it's, uh, you still recognize, uh, uh, it's the same black color, and so is his beard and the, the fur at the tip of his ears. And his, his smile is the same. Calm and kind. He doesn't. He shouldn't be here. It it just shouldn't be possible. But he's he's smiling at you and he's uh, he's holding up a finger, uh, anticipating that you're about to say something. And uh, he says, and you recognize the sound of his voice. It has uh, not changed uh, at all in all these years. Uh, and he simply says, This is not a joke, this is real, and no, I am not undead, and yes, it is a long story. Brooke waits for a second, and then reaches out his hand to touch him, just to see if he is actually real. You tap him on the shoulder, um, you feel... The, uh, his uh, soft clothes under your fingers and you push a little bit further until you feel the resistance of his skin. And he, he lets out his small chuckle and says, <laughs> Ray did the same thing. And <clears throat> then he punched me. Bert goes in for a hug, not for a punch. <laughs> And Le when he gets Leo hugs close, you back. When he gets close, he's like How? How how is that possible? Um He 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 just chuckles again and he holds you in, in that hug for, for a long time until he, he lets go of you and gestures at the chair and said I did say it's a long story. Well, third, I've brought beers. I, I saw. Thank you. He'll reach for one. The the I suppose major difference uh, uh, since the uh, from the Leo you knew um, is in his uh, clothes. Uh, no longer in a time of war. Uh, and, and, and you've never seen him wear robes of all things. Uh, 
Uh, but it, but that's the clothes he has, he has on. These robes are white and green and reach all the way in that all the way down to his feet. White and green. White and green. Yes. I I don't know what to say. Like. It's been what? How many years? Too many. Since when? How long have you been alive for? I was gone for 49 days. I didn't know at the time, but that's what I learned afterwards. Uh, look, b before I say this, I just... I just want to say I'm sorry. I, I do regret it. And I'm doing better now. I mean... I was told that you and Sunny were the ones who... I'm really sorry. I can't imagine how you took it. <clears throat> On the mention of the name Sunny, what his uh, face expression changes a bit from the happy but surprised face to seeing Leo again to a more saddened expression and he goes like it was probably one of the hardest things I've seen but I wouldn't say it doesn't matter he, he takes a big sip <laughs> of the beer and then continues I have seen a lot here on the Daria, like even heard of people coming back from the dead, but you need to tell me what 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 is going on? Right. And I've told this story many times before, and what's one more? <laughs> I have no recollection of anything during those 49 days. Uh, it's all just nothing. I, ca I can't really tell you if, if I saw something, if I was somewhere, or what kind of of afterlife even was there for me. But, uh, uh... At some point I... I opened my eyes and... There was someone holding my hand. I didn't... know her at the time. I... She didn't even give me her name. I learned at a later time who she was. Uh, as she eventually became quite a famous name back in Plurna. Uh, she is the person who is currently the Arch Cleric of the Raven. Uh, her name is Napari. And by now she's very old, but back then she wasn't the Arch Cleric, and she was younger, and she had come to dug me up and bring me back. Uh, how familiar are you with the gods of uh, the Eastern uh, Pantheon? <clears throat> the Eastern Pantheon means the one from the Jade Alliance, or what? That one. Um, I'd say I have basic knowledge. 
Why? Are you upset to see me in the robes of the gods of the Jade Alliance? I'm... I'm not upset. And he stretches out his tongue to reveal the panzer tattoo. It's, it's, it's been like 50 years. Uh, things have changed. And the war is over, so we shouldn't really get upset about gods, which gods we believe in, for the most part. Good. That's not how Nicola took it, but <laughs> I appreciate his reaction. Are they okay? Yeah. Yeah, both of them are okay. I haven't seen them in perhaps a, a few years. What were they doing then? Like, what are they up to now? Scroll, scroll, scroll. <laughs> Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. Well, my brother opened an apothecary. Really? Can you believe it? Oh. <laughs> no. It's not like he ever did some proper healing for us there. <laughs> uh, Nicola settled down and started a family. <clears throat> wow. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I did not expect to ever get an update on them again. So, and I did not is... expect to find you in Ladaria, but here you are. Yeah. What do you know what happened, like, to our side of screw? Me and Sunny. All I Probably. knew was that you left. I, I mean. I was planning on coming with you. Yeah, that's... We kept following the plan. We went to Elia Narden, helped rebuild one of the destroyed villages over there, just settled down, and then we heard of Lidaria and decided to work for the money to come over. And... Yeah, we eventually came over. Do you like it here? Yeah, I... Don't think I ever want to go back. <laughs> don't think I can. So yeah, it's... Like, we barely know anything about this land so far. So it's super exciting to keep exploring finding out new mysteries. Also seeing like the whole world more or less starting anew just on this piece of land. I mean, it's like still very similar, right? The colonies and the different territories and all that kind of stuff, but still different. Feels different. I think I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, it's different. Are you planning on staying? Here? Not Why did you come forever. over? forever. Well... Uh, maybe I can answer that by going back to my story. Oh uh, yeah. 
I asked you if, <laughs> what you know of the the pantheon of the Jade Alliance. And uh Well the the Raven it's he's known for uh, watching over those who have left us and for delivering messages between the living and the dead. And that woman, uh, Napari, that's what she was there to do. She had a message from her. For you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, is it something I can know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can know. <laughs> um, I, I want everyone to know what what Leah from Beyond the Grave wanted to say to me. What I think she wanted to say to everyone. Maybe with uh, <laughs> you know what? Hold that sword. Let's go somewhere. Okay, if you have a message from Leah, I have a better place. Uh, uh, you do? Yeah, alright. He, he finishes his beer. Um, he stands up. You see that he's... He, he used to be the thinnest... Um, Burbolg in your little group, and he, he still is. His robes kind of cling to him, uh, make him look a little bigger than he actually is. Although compared to everyone else in the tavern, the two of you are still uh, far bigger than everyone else. <laughs> uh, Brooke pays a beer at the bar with Kailu and then <clears throat> goes outside and... He leads Leo directly to the graveyard. Mm-hmm. Breaking my heart next, are you? <laughs> mm -hmm. And he leads him inside and... Walks a bit around the graveyard until he gets to the spot of Sunny's grave. And uh, then just stands in front of it in silence for a bit. Um, you, you can see uh, Leo's uh, normally uh, calm demeanor um, um, waver a little bit as he realizes you're taking him to a, a cemetery. Um, and uh, the, the realization begins to dawn on him of what he's about to see. And by the time you stop in front of a certain uh, grave, he, he looks like he already knew what he was about to see. Like he had already uh, made a guess. Um, and he... He pauses in front of it and then eventually uh, sits down and uh, touches the headstone. I had no idea. Brooke sits down next to him. I... Nobody knows. Besides me. And... I can't really tell you what happened. I can just show you that it happened. So... If there are any words from Lear that are also meant for Sunny, I think this would be a better place. Roll an insight check. Pretty please. Inside. Okay. Uh, he definitely has uh, a confused expression when you say that you can't tell him what happened. Uh, and he seems to be having this inner debate about whether to press you for, for details. Um, and uh, he, he, 
he seems to be so uh, focused on a question that he almost doesn't doesn't hear uh, the 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 end of your last sentence uh, until he sort of like shakes himself back into focus and looks back towards you and simply um, simply gives you a small nod and and says, "All right, I guess I'll tell the both of you." And uh, um, he repeats what he said to you earlier about how he has been dead for uh, almost two months and then a cleric of the raven who later became the arch cleric of the raven um, brought him back <clears throat> and that uh, this this cleric Napari had a message from from Leah uh, for for him and uh, he shares a message with you and now with Sunny when he says <laughs> it, it, it's it's just a small thing it's it's a it's very simple but it, it, it meant everything for me at the time when when this woman told me that leah wants us to move on i mean we know i knew but And he doesn't finish the sentence, he just leaves it hanging. Now he's looking down and um, that shyness that he used to express whenever he talked uh, about the person that he had a crush on um, seems to have faded a little bit over time. Um, his feelings a little less kept hidden, uh, a bit more uh, of this sort of what even he seems to acknowledge as an open secret. Rook puts an arm around him. <laughs> if it only were that easy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> if only. Well, you're working for the Raven now, right? So. Uh, no, actually. Not the Raven. Oh. Uh, that would be a fair assumption to make, uh, but, well, for a while I wasn't really sure what I even wanted to do. I didn't want to let Leah down again. I wandered around a little bit, and I figured it out eventually. I have been given a second shot at life, and I want to make sure that everyone lives... Uh, the best life that they can. I've been working for the snake ever since. Hmm. Okay. Well, I don't really know how to, how to explain it, and, and none of us have ever been particularly religious, and uh, particularly not towards this pantheon. But I just connected to him, you know. I think so, but, well, if you get another chance to deliver a message, you feel free to tell Leah that I'm trying, and I hope I'll get there eventually. I... You look to me like you're doing fine. What do you mean by that? I mean, look at you. I mean, the war has been over for a really long time and you had to put on more muscle. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I have a new job. <laughs> yeah? It, it's... It's like... Me and Sunny started this together, right? It's like... After the war, we didn't really want to serve for a single country anymore. And wanted to decide ourselves what, what people to help and what to invest our energy in. And there is like this one group of people here that is called the Phantom Guard. And it's like, 
some kind oh, um, of mercenary work? Yeah, I've, I've heard of them. Yeah, that's that's also where the tattoos come from. I... Huh. Mercenary work. For you? It, For it's, Sunny? It, listen, it was... We were both good at fighting, right? That was like the best skill we had. And why not put that into use, but instead of just aimlessly killing a bunch of people to get like a tiny advantage, some information from the enemies, or over the enemies, to the choosing what we want to fight for, and putting all those years of experience and training into good work. <laughs> hey, I'm so not opposed to it. You can run around uh, hurting people and that gives me work as I'll just follow your trail and heal everyone you leave behind. <laughs> I, I... I guess that was not exactly what I tried to say, but yeah. <laughs> it's just that's... you said that fighting is that skill you have and you want to put it to good use, but my answer was to let go of it. That's a path too. And you could consider it. You know what? Lately I've been with a bunch of people that have somehow managed to get out of sticky situations just with talking. Oh, I don't know how... You made a new group of friends? Uh, yeah. And... They're actually without knowing... I can't no believe you replaced the scouts. What do you mean? Come on. <laughs> he just like gives you a little, a little <laughs> tap on the shoulder. It's 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 different. It's a different group. None of them really fight, and when they fight, they fight with their words, and it is very effective. It's I don't know if maybe if we had these talkers back then during the war, not that many people would have had to die. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. They want to see you. Anyways, like, even before knowing it would be you, they're very intrigued by a furbuck being... or serving for a pantheon. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Most people I come across are. Just... Well, first off, would you be willing to talk to them? Of course. I don't just talk to people who need healing. I'll have a chat That's... with your new friends. That's good. They're all staying in the dragon wagon as well. Just be aware that there might be a lot of questions being headed your way, and it's okay to not know the answers to everything. And even, like, if it gets too much, just tell them. <laughs> because otherwise they will keep asking and asking. If these but, people yeah. fight with their words, I am afraid I will be no match for them. <laughs> uh, what... How long are you gonna stay, like, how long do I have you here? I wasn't planning to stay for this long, but now that I'm here, I might as well see that tournament that's taking place tomorrow. Hmm. And I think I'll... Uh, towards Lita, eventually. Lita? It's to the east. Yeah, I have one of my group is from there. Oh. Well, it would be lovely to meet him. Or her? Him. Him. Yeah. You will meet my group, maybe even this evening, I don't know. if You can... If you're here again, you can always come back to the place, right? I... Okay. Yeah. So... If you need some more time, that's okay, but otherwise I would meet you in the dragon wagon again. Later tonight? Sure, I'll be there. <laughs> okay, then. Do you have anything to do for the rest of the day? Uh, no. Unless something comes up, but I don't. No plans. For once? Well, what do you want to do? do? <laughs> There's so much to catch up on. 
All right, then let's talk for tonight. You tell me everything what is going on in that nice place we call Alimir, okay? <laughs> How come they still don't have a colony over here? <laughs> like, everyone has one. Um, so, the two of you are going to spend the rest of the day talking. Um, yeah. until evening when the party should regroup. And then he can come with you. Does that, does mm -hmm. that work? Is that fine? Sounds good. Okay. Alright. Scroll, 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 scroll. And that's done. <laughs> <laughs> the music change. <laughs> Theme change. Um, let's move on to Pontifex for a moment. Mm -hmm. Um, as you have a competition to sign up for. I do. Um, so, you ask around uh, until you find... Uh, the place where you are supposed to, to actually sign up. Mm -hmm. um, and there's like this little building uh, where when you when you step in, it's like a little office and there's a few people running around. It's uh, um, it seems that there is a lot of an a a administrative work going on. Um, it's it's right near the town hall. So it seems to be another like uh, building where uh, uh, various kind of stuff, things are taking place. So, um, but you you walk up straight to the to the closest counter where you see a, a short-haired uh, elf uh, uh, greeting you, and there's a little there's a little plaque on the table that that says uh, um, that the signups for for the tournament uh, take place here, and they'll close in one hour from now. Uh, hello. I'm uh, here to sign up for the wizarding tournament thingy. The solstice bit. Well, you're in the right place. And also just in time. Um, name, please. Uh, you have a fresh inkwell, yes? <laughs> um, he, he I'm just... just kidding. It is not that long. My name oh. is uh, Pontifex Vasadalusa Alinach. Um, you see his expression <laughs> drop a little bit, and he says, "You're Pontifex." Uh, yeah. Uh, well, who, who, who's asking? Who wants to know? <laughs> oh, I'm, 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 I'm nobody. It's just, but everybody knows about you. You, oh, you oh. saved the Simulion. Oh yes, that yes, absolutely, that is me. <laughs> well, it would be. It would be incredible to have you take place in in the tournament. Uh, great, yes, I, I'm sure it would. Uh, you don't I, happen uh, to have access to like a list of other participants or anything like that, would you? Well, the the list isn't complete yet. Uh, uh, once you once you sign up, uh, there is a. Um, uh, there will be a small process. Y you'll just have to do a, f a few small um, tests. A few. More. It, it will be a small thing. It's just to weed out the people who are, uh, well, not going to be good enough for the competition. But but you, I'm sure the, the tryouts for you will just be a formality, really. And once those are uh, done, the, the full list will be available tomorrow. Sure, sure, okay. But uh, you have the, like a list of like, uh, uh, how do we call them? Uh, signees, applicants, ones for the trials. They're not available for other participants to see. Oh no, no, no! I don't wish to like see it myself. That would be, well, that would be perverse. But. Uh, just wondering if some uh, one uh, one person in particular is signed up. 
we have a rivalry, you see, and if they are not, it would really hurt my heart. So I just want to know that, uh, that they're part of it before I go ahead with it myself, you know? Uh, could you just look up a name? <laughs> Roll a persuasion check. <laughs> Oh my god. Welcome back. <laughs> I'm back, the royal fan base. <laughs> so it begins. <laughs> Boom! Um, okay. The, the man, um, I guess he has like a little name tag. His name is Teroth. Um, uh, he, he's... It, it's clear that he can't find it in himself to say no to you. Um, and he, like, he looks around just to make sure that like nobody's directly, you know, here with him at this moment. And he says, if I could have an autograph, I could look up a name for you. How does huh. that sound? Oh, is that all? Of course. I would love to sign whatever you wish for me to sign. In fact, I will sign multiple things. Well, perhaps you will sign up the... You, you will sign the sign-up form. Of course, once I have confirmed that my rival is here, lest it be a waste of my time, you know? I will lose my motivation if I, I do not have the one person I wish to impress. <laughs> right. Uh, well, it messes he, with my mojo. He, like, gives you a piece of paper to, to, to sign for him. Um... Really? Once. Just paper? I mean, I can sign anything in, like, whatever color you want. It, it doesn't go away. It could do anything. I, I, I didn't bring anything. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be getting a, an autograph today. Just... Please? Do it yourself. He'll pull out his, his or he'll, he'll, like, you know, stick his finger into the little port on that golden astrolabe and pull out his little gold ink inkwell pen looking thing. Magic autograph it in blue. Okay. Uh, and in return, he asks what name you'd like to look up. Eh, the last name will suffice. Eh, Aradova. Uh, you see, you see his uh, his brow <laughs> furring a little bit. Uh, and then he he looks around quickly and he says. Uh, of Rodova. Uh, yes. Oh, the, no. None of the Arodova participating in the tournament, that they're running it. That that would be a conflict of interest. Oh. None of them are participating? Like, maybe one of the daughters of the Arodova family? N n no, nobody. Hmm. But they will be watching. Yeah. Not the entire family is here on the Daria, but uh, some of them are. I see. Hey, good enough. And he'll, <laughs> he'll jot down his signature. Um. Uh, so, this tournament thing... Uh, how is this? Is this uh, like wizard combat thing? Uh, do I need to worry about the killing anyone? Uh, is, no is it just killing like, anyone. Uh, tasks? <laughs> oh, um, okay. So, this is the full set of rules, and he like hands it over, and it is like there's a lot. This is the kind of document you would write. There's a lot of like very, very lawyery speech, um, and it looks like you have to uh, to agree to the terms and conditions. Um, <sighs> Finally, but, uh, something I can understand. <laughs> Uh, the, the gist of it uh, uh, is that there will be multiple rounds of various kinds of challenges. Uh, and uh, once uh, people will get eliminated over those challenges, and once they're down to a certain number, uh, there will be actual uh, battles between uh, uh, the remaining contestants. And those will be in teams that will be randomly uh, selected. Uh, until and then with every time a team wins then that team will be split in two and they'll fight against one another until there's just two and then it will be a duel ah. 
A duel, you say? Between okay. the final two contestants, yes. Right, right, of course. Okay. Uh, is this all the same day? It will be all tomorrow. I see. Very interesting. Uh, it is a um, okay. trial of endurance as much as everything else. Yes, of course. A trial of wit. Uh, creativity. Mm -hmm. I like it. There is an entry fee. And that being? Uh, 15 gold pieces. Oh, yes, of course. He's going to pull out his coin purse and just pff, like the big <laughs> sack of hundreds of coins and like, <laughs> fish out a one, a two, a three. And he'll count out to 15 <laughs> and he'll slide it all over in one like perfect single stacked column of chips. Okay, not the coupon? Oh, yes, of course. I would never. Met this stupid Pontifex is not. <laughs> uh, I have a coupon uh, for 10% uh, off. <laughs> okay, so you, you place the coin pouch on the table and you count the coins and then you uh, look into your, your your backpack for the coupon and as you um, as you find it whoops as you find it and uh, you hold it up um, it is snatched from your hand by someone else that was almost directly behind you and you turn around just to see this person um, breaking it in half and uh, um, a very familiar uh, face greets you. Um, long blonde hair that it feels like this haircut has been changed in forever. Uh, you think this woman might have been born with it? Um, and that smile that you hate so much. Uh, <laughs> frozen on her face uh, as she lets go of the two halves of the coupon and looks at you and says don't be ridiculous this is the famous pontifex we're talking about he doesn't need a discount he doesn't even he doesn't have to pay the entry fee whatsoever he's free <laughs> to join oh uh no, no, uh, that is fine. I insist. Uh, your charity is much appreciated, but equally unnecessary. And I will still slide the 15 gold coin <laughs> tower towards the guy. In uh, fact, uh, I am so not in need of charity that I am, in fact, oozing gold coins out of orifices, and I will throw down another five gold on top of the tower. <laughs> You're paying extra? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Terrorist seems to have no idea what to do. He is just sitting behind his desk, looking at Pontifex, looking at this woman, uh, back and forth, back and forth, down at the money, and he just goes, um... Uh, uh, to which the, the elven woman, uh, wagging her finger, says, No, no, no. Do not be ridiculous, professor. Um, and, and, and she just, like, takes a step towards the desk and she uh, puts a hand uh, on it, uh, making, like, kind of leaning towards it and, and uh, she says, uh, you are going to be one of the most recognizable names and faces in this tournament. How could I ever ask you to pay to sign up? Please, I insist. And then use the coins for the next applicant. You can say it is courtesy of the great and magnanimous and not in need of charity, Professor Pontifex Vastalus <laughs> Olenach. Uh, Ruth looks up at her and uh, uh, she, Shalira Aradova, gives him a nod. And Ruth uh, um, takes the money and puts it in in a small container under the desk and uh, 
hands over all the forms to you, Pontifex. He hardly says a word. He basically just tells you where to sign and what to read and at what time to show up for, for, uh, for what and where. Uh, but he keeps it as short as possible. And he, he clearly has no idea how to handle this sudden tension. Uh, rather than relishing uh, being able to read through forms and hyper analyze like all their verbiage and check for run on sentences and like check for any possible loopholes that he would normally do, he's like speed reading through this, signing everything that is necessary <laughs> and getting it out of the way and is like constantly flicking gazes back and forth <laughs> between the document and the elf. <laughs> <laughs> this like speed runs <laughs> this application speed run sign application up. any percent <laughs> uh, new world record okay uh, you get everything done under the watchful eye of Shalera um, who seems really happy about what's going on uh, and you're done at the rec record pace. So, I take it that you are here to watch the tournament, yes? I helped organize it, and of course I will be watching. Of course, not participating is that usually requires tangership at a magical university, perhaps describes per se. Uh, her practiced smile doesn't waver, as she says. I cannot participate in a tournament I helped organize. Of course you can't. It would not be fair. Not at all. And when I, well, if I were to win, then people would call it in question. Of course. It would be disingenuous. Well, it the looks Aradova like you The Aradova family is not above scrutiny, of course. Um... She just glances over the forms you have delivered, then she like pats him with her hand and says, Looks like you're all good to go. Uh, good luck for uh, tomorrow, uh, Professor. I'm I sure it will it. go swimmingly. Hi, frog joke. <laughs> He's like muttering under his breath. <laughs> she called me a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, I'm sure we will all be swimming. Uh, Shalera chuckles to herself and she heads off. <coughs> Somewhere in the building. <coughs> like, shoot a glance at the, uh, at the, the booth attendee and give him just like this scowl that only a man <laughs> with no eyebrows can do. <laughs> and then, <laughs> like, just waltz off to the side. Uh, I think he's, like, looking up and is trying to, like, analyze this arena. Uh, okay. Uh, as I've uh, described previously, it's, mm -hmm. um, it's like this floating and constantly just rotating platform. Uh, so, like, if you look at it long enough, eventually you'd be able to see it, like, upside down, um, and you'd be able to see what inside of it. Um, it, uh, as it is, it looks, for the most part, empty, uh, except for, it seems like something is being brought uh, in inside of it, in the middle of it. Uh, you see some, like, construction materials and things that look like large... Um, Use like really big crates of sorts, uh, and then eventually it rotates back uh, uh, in this position. Mm -hmm. hmm. uh, are there like people there, like working on it? Working, yes. Uh, when and when the when the whole thing is upside down, they don't fall. Huh. 
Okay. Uh, I think the professor is going to wander off into, like, try to find, like, a more secluded slash open area. Uh, like, you know, where he has some, some space, we'll say, to stretch his arms, metaphorically. Uh, but mostly looking for seclusion. Uh, and then he is going to use the new feature of the wand. Uh, he's going to swish and flick it through the air. Uh, uh, and he's going to turn into a red beak. Okay. Uh, whatever whatever you're about to do, we can get back to it uh, uh, later. But I'd like to switch okay. to the others for the time being. Um, if that's all right. Yeah, he's just turning to a red beacon, is going to fly and get like a closer look at the arena, and then find yeah, another we'll... thing, deactivate it, and then mm -hmm. go back. Yep, yeah, we'll, we'll get to it. Uh, cool. Uh, for now, I know that Pip has some things that he wants to buy. I go to the nearest rock stall. <laughs> um, and you're giving me the list. Um, was there anything in addition to those three things? No, three rocks. Unless they have any particular rock that is, like, super cool. <laughs> um, well, you can roll an investigation check, which is your favorite. I am so good at those. Um, and, and Pip, there, there are way more market stalls than before. Um, the, the, the city is in full preparation for, for the summer solstice. Uh, and it's not just going to be the, the tournament, that's the main thing, but there's lots of food and lots of fun things to, to look at and buy. And you actually, there's such a concentration of stalls and little market spaces that you, you, you end up getting lost in an area that you had already seen before. Uh, and eventually you circle back around just because of how different it is. Uh, and you're reminded of the... Uh, of the day of rebirth, uh, the celebrations that never took place, and it really feels like they're making up for it with uh, uh, with tomorrow's festivities. Uh, and you end up finding some cool rocks, but it's just the ones that uh, you as Austin had set your eyes on. Um, cool. But to, to Pip, those are really pretty. Uh, they're they're really partially see-through. Uh, they sparkle in the sunlight. Uh, they are really beautiful, intense colors. Uh, they are very expensive for rocks. For rocks that you could just take out of the river. But then again, you've never seen a rock this pretty in a river. So you, you kind of get it. Pip still has a very little concept of how much money is worth, really. And so he has no problem shelling out 30 <laughs> gold pieces for these rocks. Like the, got... the closest thing you can think of is the price <laughs> of food. And you know that you could eat a lot of food with what you're paying yeah. right now. But, like, these are rocks, so they're obviously worth way more than that. Uh, he got an azurite, which is this gorgeous deep blue stone, and a turquoise, which is a, a more light teal uh, bluish green, and an eye agate, which is this uh, banded uh, rock that has these circular patterns uh, in rings going up and down its structure um, and he happily takes those and sorts them into his rock pouch um, and I think you know he would just be walking around taking in the festivities maybe he'd pay the uh, the creepy old lady stall a visit to see if she's stocked up on anything interesting and just enjoy the day okay yeah, this, is a, this is a good day to be um to be a kid and walk around. Uh, nobody tells you you can't buy that many sweets, and so you buy a lot of them. Um, <laughs> and it's... Uh, uh, there is... Um, mm, 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 mm. No, not that. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> so, sorry, sorry. It's, it's nothing. <laughs> mm, not that, not that. Um, but, uh, yeah, by, by the end of the day, you bought, uh, uh, a lot of food, a lot of sweets, some really pretty rocks, and probably a few toys, too. Um, although they're not as cool as the ones that you got in Erica.
Oh well. I will spend an extra five gold on miscellaneous garbage. <laughs> Candy. Miscellaneous toys, garbage. The whole works. <laughs> Uh, and I'll get back to you on something, but it will be later. Okay. For Tekka. Uh, Tekka, your planes are regionally involved heading uh, southward uh, towards uh, the place where you had met the Etarava. And that plan has fallen through a little bit, so what's uh, the new plan? Yeah. Um, so when Tekka finds himself in Simlialan on a day with so many people, uh, he kind of feels put off by it. He's not, he doesn't feel comfortable in such of a big crowd, like he can't keep track of everyone around him. So he settles to go outside the walls of Simlialan and go gather blue pe petal flowers, go dig for termite and ant eggs uh, below tree roots. So just take a nap and try to escape all the chaos mm -hmm. uh, of the city. Uh, and probably by the end of the day, uh, as they've agreed to gather, uh, as he passes through Simli a lot, uh, Tekka remembers the task he took upon from uh, the child in Urka to look for Kelv's mom with blue long hair and blue eyes. Mm -hmm. So take an opportunity of so many people gathered here. Uh, we'll try to look for those features. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll um, I mean, an investigation check for me. And it. Uh, you spent some time looking around. Uh, you didn't expect to immediately uh, find uh, what you're looking for, but uh, you're, you will be thorough, and that is only the beginning of your search. Uh, there's other days, there's other colonies to search, but uh, for the time being, um, you don't spot... Uh, a hair of blue hair that matches the rest of the description. Got it. Uh, but you are, at some point, instead, approached by an Itara filly. Um, you don't recognize him, uh, and he doesn't seem to know you either, as he simply... Um, when when he approaches you, he, he looks at you up and down, and then uh, double checking with you, like he's not sure. He says, "Are you Eka?" And he speaks in Ezen Fair. Oh. Yeah, I think Teka is taken back and sort of uh, leaps back slightly. Um, that. Is my name. How do you know it? And can I have an inside check? Okay. Okay. Um, the way this man looks at you is the way that a lot of people look at you. You've met, uh, um, you've been met with hostility and with disgust many, many, many times from both uh, Plurnans and Ladarians. And this man seems to have uh, uh, a certain set of ideas about you. You can see that he's not. He's not hostile, but he's not friendly either. He's keeping more distance from you than somebody uh, would when holding a conversation. And when he holds out something in your direction, he he's um, 
it's it, he doesn't do so with particular friendliness. He ba he barely even makes eye contact, uh, as he says. This has been given to me by someone else. Who was given it by someone else, and that person received it from someone else again, and that other person received it from a pelican. From a bird. This belonged to a bird. He just gestures for you uh, to take it. And he's holding an envelope. They usually do not bring good with them. But knowing something is better than nothing and grabs uh, the item. I know nothing of it. I'm just doing this out of honor. Have the birds learned to write? Nodding towards them. Um, <laughs> as the glances out on the letter, uh, the, the Atara Philly gives a bit of a sort of like a defeated shrug and, and says, not the craziest thing to have happened lately. The earth I've... dances, so why can't birds write? Are things worse? Do the rivers still flow? Um, the man seems to be sort of like to be really wanting to leave, <laughs> and uh, and he says, "At least we still get to live." Fine, you know my name. Give me yours, then you go. It's Ivy. Hopefully we'll never meet again. Nothing is given on this earth. Enjoy solstice. Um, without much of a goodbye or even a wave or a nod, uh, he steps away. You're left alone with an envelope. And um, looking at it, you see, indeed, your name. And there is a short description of you, but that's, um, that's not what catches your attention. What you realize right away, as soon as you glance down at the writing, is that this is your mother's handwriting. With that, I think Tekka immediately tries to find a secluded area. Probably impossible to find. <laughs> uh, uh, you, you probably, like, yeah, looking around since it's the, the city is so busy, you would end up going back to where you took a nap. Yes. Just out yeah, of the yeah, boundaries yeah. of the colony. Uh, nobody Completely. bothered you while you were there. So that feels, uh, yeah, that feels like a good place. Mm -hmm. And opens the envelope, begins reading. Okay. Here is your letter. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, hold on. There we yep, go. There we go. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I will not be giving a voice for this letter. Um, That's fine. Tekka, there is so much I have never told you. I thought it would be easier to say it all in writing long after you left. But... I was mistaken. I still can't bring myself to explain. Do you understand why your journey brings me so much sorrow? The truth that evades you at the end of your path 
they'll only hurt you. You're reaching through the brambles for a prickly fruit, convinced that you'll starve without it, unaware of its poison. And yet, all I can do is to let you go. Your father says that you'll be all right, and he believes it deeply, but my dreams torment me with darker outcomes. Still, I want to believe just the way he does. So, today, I share with you what little wisdom I have to teach. You are free, Tekka. Never forget that your freedom is your greatest strength. You are always free to choose the path you desire, no matter what anyone says or what anyone does. Don't let your past shackle you, and instead, search for it, find it, and then free yourself from it. There's nothing else I can do to prepare you for what you for what you learn. I only hope that someday you'll understand my actions. We love you so very, very much. Sara. There is some ink uh, bleeding through the paper and you turn it around. You turn it around. Okay. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> and there is a sketch of you. Of the way she sees you. Yeah, I think Tekka just reaches out with an open hand and yeah, kind of rubs it across the sketch. And yeah, kind of just looks upon it in silence. <sighs> like, there's a tightness in his chest that will not let him to sigh or to speak a word. And he... takes out his rucksack and opens it to see sleeping Ollie. <sighs> Tries his best to <laughs> relax and think. A few minutes pass before he folds his letter back up into the envelope, puts it into his book and then walks back into Simnila. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Um dun 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 and dun. Now, as for uh, Pontifex, uh, this is a spell he has never done before. He knows about it. He has seen other um, wizards do it. And he, he gets, he knows all the theory behind it. He just has never had enough power within himself uh, um, to actually uh, pull it off. And uh, Pontifex has been getting stronger lately, um, having uh, his life on the line very often uh, since he has gotten to, to Ladaria has definitely pushed his spellcasting abilities uh, to new heights. Uh, but this time he doesn't have to rely on his own uh, strength. The wand provides the magic that he still lacks. And when, when he holds it and when he thinks of, you said a red beak, yeah? Uh, yeah, I was thinking like a, a flying creature yeah. uh, in particular. A red beak is perfectly yeah. fine. Okay. Um, 
when he thinks of uh, uh, wanting to to get up the, to the arena to check it out, uh, uh, he thinks of wings. Uh, he defaults to a red beak. He knows it wouldn't be unusual in this these specific circumstances in Simulion to for there to be one because you see you saw them flying around before. There's a Tarava in mm -hmm. the city, uh, and they're on good terms with the elves now. Um, so you, you think about that, and it it feels like despite the fact you never cast a spell before, you know it on some instinctive level. Uh, you know what to do, you know the gestures, you know the words, and the wand fills in all the little details that uh, you wouldn't know. And you think of a pair of wings and uh, a big body and the wind uh, lifting you up to new heights. Um, and as you focus on this mental image, you begin to feel your body uh, shifting. And it's not, while it is a weird feeling, it is not an unpleasant one. Despite the fact that your skeleton is rearranging itself, your bones are stretching and breaking and new ones are growing. None of this is painful. It's quick. It's strange, but it's not painful. And looking down at yourself as this as this is taking place, uh, you don't see feathers. You see scales, blue and glimmering, partially see-through. Your arms don't become wings, but the wings come out of your back instead, and they are big. You are you see the ground getting far away from you. Uh, Further than you thought, you are taller than you thought you were going to become, and you are not a bird. You are a dragon. And I'm sending you the stat block over here. Oh. My goodness. Um, this oh. is what you are. What? He has in his inner monologue. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, this is no bird. Uh, he's like this, you know, I guess from an outside camera view, this dragon is like looking at its own hands uh, and like, <laughs> like yeah, stomping into the feet. ground a little bit like a mm -hmm. cat preening the carpet. You can barely fit in this uh, uh, alleyway that you chose. Like your, your, your wings can't stretch and you're almost shoulder to shoulder from one end, uh, from, from one building to the other. Oh, geez. Eh. Uh. Okay, uh, <laughs> he's a little like so enamored with this. He's not really paying attention to the fact that he's a freaking dragon in the middle of, of the alleyway in a heavily populated town. Uh, and he's just going to like kind of meander out of this alleyway to try to find a place that's bigger where he can like stretch. Okay, um, the, the, <laughs> <laughs> the alleyway is... Uh one of the few currently empty and quiet places in Simlianon, but you know that if you were to leave it, uh, that would no longer be the case. You're right. That? Yeah, I don't think he even realizes yeah, that's, that, oh that's yeah, not I wouldn't just so no one would see me do this. He right. does not care at this point. Right, right, right. Um, and plus, the um, as by the polymorph rules, your, your stats are also different. Um, but in, in this case... Um, like your 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 mental capabilities compared to uh, your previous ones, they're not that different. Um, Still, you feel like, like perhaps, way above average. Yeah, you you feel like perhaps you wouldn't be able to uh, solve the same crazy equations that you were able to before. But you're still you're still very very lucid and very. Uh, this, despite the emotional turmoil, you're you're reasonably focused and and still able to to think logically. Uh, this mm -hmm. is not the brain of an animal. Um, it's something more. Mm -hmm. uh, someone still capable of of speech. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, in in your in your shock, you're beginning to feel really uncomfortable with your wings cramped up as they are, and almost instinctively you move away down the alleyway and out and you stretch your wings you open them and you just have this entirely new set of limbs but you feel comfortable with them they they make sense to your to your brain right now and it feels good to extend them 
all the way outward. And you make eye contact with an elf. About 30 feet away from you, uh, this woman who just walked into this slightly more open area. You're kind of like in this uh, um, more of a residential part of the colony. Um, and she drops this basket that she was holding and just runs off. Yep, nothing has changed. <laughs> <laughs> I do think that, like you said, this this form has like affected his psyche a little bit, and it's like, of course I'm not going to hide away. I'm a dragon. <laughs> what are they going to do? <laughs> yeah, well, it's like I'm not a rat scurrying down an alleyway. I go where I please. Yeah, and and you have a job <laughs> to do, and you look up at the yeah. at the uh, arena. Uh, and you know that you can reach it really easily. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to, like, do that that really long, like, cat stretch, like, butt high up in the air, mm -hmm. shoulder blades, like, almost on the ground, big stretch, big mm -hmm. wings everywhere, uh, and kind of, like, just, you know, ruffle off the stuff, because now suddenly uh, he is not crippled level. Old man bones. Oh no, you weak, feel young. You feel light. Yeah, he feels great. You have these. Uh, some of your horns uh, are not attached to your head, and you can see that in your shadow. Uh, they're floating. It's like it's like. Uh, wow, I don't know what to compare it to, <laughs> uh, but they floating are. Horns. Yes, it's just floating horns, and you can see that uh, uh, they're kind of jagged, uh, and you you you. you you get your uh, face in front of a uh, of a window just to see your own reflection, uh, mm -hmm. and as you as you could see while looking down at yourself, uh, um, looking out at your face, it's I mean it's a face that you don't recognize, but it is your own reflection, and you can see it's as if your entire body is just made of sapphires. Every scale, the horns, these floating bits around your head. Even your wings are translucent and, uh, uh, well, they feel like they're made of a soft material, flexible. The wings function, but what you're seeing, what they're made of, doesn't, doesn't match. If you, stay, if you stayed perfectly still, you'd look like a sculpture. Hmm. This just feels right. And yeah, he's going to take off uh, and fly up towards the arena. Here you go. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> um, no, that's the wrong color. Well, I'll take this one. Uh, that's not properly to scale. It will be more like this. Yeah, that's about right. Holy crap. Okay. Yeah, he's gonna fly to the arena, and then yeah, he's a he's a dragon. He's not gonna be subtle about it. He's gonna like straight up land in the middle of the arena, exactly here, just thud um, down in the ground. Yeah, the moment you just spread your wings and you you push them downward, uh, the the air it, it feels kind of like swimming, and it comes really easily to you. You feel weightless. You just take off. There is hardly any wind, but you don't need any. Uh, and uh, as you begin to rise up, you hear the commotion beneath you. Um, you, you don't look back down, but you can imagine people pointing at you and uh, yelling and screaming. And uh, uh, I feel like Brooke would be too far uh, since he's in, in the graveyard, which is at the very edges of the city, and it's quiet <coughs> there. Uh, but and uh, Talix would be uh, in his meeting. Um, Tech is sleeping away from the colony, but Pip is right <laughs> here, uh, shopping for gemstones. <laughs> uh, and, and so Pip here is the the commotion. He's holding a stone that looks a lot like uh, uh, what just is flying up in the sky. It's the same shade. It's the it's shimmers in the sunlight in the same way. Uh, Pip, you see a dragon fly up to that floating arena, and then out of view. Um, um, okay, we're under attack. Uh, 
Uh, Pip goes to try and find Pontifex. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Everybody who was working here at the at the arena uh, screams and scatters. Uh, You land here and you take a good look at uh, um, what they're setting up. It seems like a um, a series of rooms that are like built to be self-contained with just one door leading in uh, but they're, they're they're fully enclosed uh, and right now you're a little too big to get inside of one of them but one of the doors is open you can kind of see inside that uh, um, you see some things that look like uh, like puzzles and uh, pieces of paper with riddles written on them S- some contraptions that are currently not running Uh, that's it. Hmm. Uh, and there's there's workers up here, right? Yeah, but right now they're just running for their lives. <laughs> uh, retreating back into these areas. Hmm. Uh, I don't think he's going to say anything or even care that people are running away because I think he's in the, like, lions do not concern themselves with the actions of sheep mm-hmm. mentality. Because <laughs> he is a giant. Uh, and he's just going to, like waltz around in this arena and like check everything like are there gimmicks in the floor what is in the boxes i am slightly curious <laughs> and uh, i think like his normal caution that he has and like his um, even as socially inept as the professor is he does understand like social faux pas and i mm-hmm. think all of that is just completely out the window yeah and uh, and for some reason boxes really seem appealing to you right now yeah None of them can fit you, though, and that's a shame. If I could fit, I could sit. But... <laughs> um, uh. Roll an investigation check with your current intelligence. Um, <laughs> okay. And I don't, you're no longer proficient, if you were. Okay, you okay, were. you don't maintain, okay. I get mixed up between polymorph and, uh, and wild shape. Yeah, just, just use the stat block I gave you. This is exactly what you have. Okay, so plus three. Could what? Could, Could what? Money and pound and effects. Wait, do I have like a? Do I have a profanity filter? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Sid? Ascent effects. Uh, S- dollar and pound oh, effects. It was sass and effects. Ah. <laughs> Surely we can turn off uh, uh, that that profanity filter. That's pretty funny. Um. Okay, Wendy. Um, you, uh, the only quote unquote gimmicks that uh, uh, you find in the construction of the arena is that there is multiple pipes that seem to lead from beneath the floor up. And some of them, since this was a work in progress, are currently uncovered. And in one of these portable rooms that you found, it seems like they were in the middle of connecting that room to that pipe. So it seems like there's Mm. something that's going to be uh, put into these rooms. Hmm. Uh, Like, are these like liquid pipes? Uh, that's what you infer. Right now, there's okay. nothing going through. Uh, okay. Um, and about how big, roughly, is the is the arena? Like, I guess, what's the radius of this place? Or however it'd be easiest for you? Uh, Just to get, like, is, a size. It is 100 feet radius. 100 foot radius. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, he's... Okay, this is uh, about what I expected. Nothing too shysty. <laughs> it's this is big <laughs> dragon slapping around like, and this is in the way, and just like scooches <laughs> boxes over to the side. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I think he's like his curiosity is for the most part satisfied if that's all he finds, and uh, he's going to uh, fly back down. Um, like in just the middle of like I don't know what the most 
open um, slash like welcoming looking area uh, would be. L- let me interrupt you actually, because um, oh. having done what you had originally set out to do, you're you're struck with a thought. There's somewhere that you need to go, and uh, that idea ha- is just deep deep into your mind and you don't you're not really sure if it came from you in the first place but you know you need to do this uh there's there's someone where you're needed and instead of flying down from the arena you fly up and oh. up and up and up until you reach the clouds and you breach them and far above where nobody from the ground would ever be able to see it, you find land, floating islands, way above the clouds and between the clouds, defying gravity, and full of plant life. You see enormous trees and you see lakes and waterfalls that uh, that just where the water seems to endlessly pour downward into the world below. And there is one particular place where you need to go. And you pass other dragons. And you don't particularly concern yourself with them. Uh, it's, it feels right, it feels normal that they would be here. Uh, you got somewhere to go and you can't uh, uh, stop to worry about them oh my gosh oh Ooh. my gosh whoa what is happening <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> so much flowing water <gasps> and this is where we're going this is where we're going to take a little break what whoa. is happening oh my god what is happening <laughs> <laughs> i hmm. didn't Holy think this cr- was going to happen today <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, I yeah? guess I'm sorry, and you're welcome. <laughs> Holy crap! So, did the wand do this? <laughs> that was that was this is. So the, I mean, the wand clearly doesn't do what I thought it did. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, uh, it's cursed, I, my dude. <laughs> I thought the wand let me cast polymorph on myself. Is like what it does, uh-huh. uh, and so I did. You didn't and think it didn't? It you didn't think the legendary a- item you got at level five didn't have a catch to it? Did you? <laughs> I mean, is this a catch? <laughs> uh, There's a cage it up to here a that's conveniently your size. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> We're back. Hello. Hello, Welcome everyone. Back. Uh, I hope you can breathe well uh, around this table right now, because I, I the the I have this smoke machine in the room. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, it's for it's for the the atmosphere. Oh. Um. Can I hide this down here? Yes. It's not going to break anyone's immersion. Um, okay, so Pontifex slash Dragon. Uh, you reach a particular set of floating islands. Um, and you land here. I made the flying thingy. There we go. Yeah. And uh, uh, this is not your, your logical mind speaking, but you've... You feel like you need to get in here. Uh, of course, if I fit, it's, I see. It, yeah, if you finally found a crate that is your size. Um, except that the M made it slightly smaller than you, but that's me. Eh. <laughs> uh, and this is going to take a tiny bit of fiddling around, but... Nah. Flawless. Perfection. It is my little crate. I am crate trained, you see. Yeah. Oh, let me, let me. Yeah, you can tell I was very ready for this <laughs> to happen today. Ah! Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Um, and it says you, as you, as you close the, uh, 
the uh the gate the the, the uh <laughs> the door <laughs> behind you um that you hear um uh, the sound of a locking mechanism uh as somebody will walks up to your cage and makes sure that it is locked from the outside um Somebody, not not a dragon. You see some flying around, uh, but what you see is uh, uh, is a man, uh, a man you've met before. He's he's very uh, tall, one of the tallest uh, humanoids you've come across, besides uh, furbolgs and uh, giant themselves. He his skin is completely white, uh, and he he's standing on the tip of his toes, uh, and his box are painted in beautiful, colorful patterns. Boop. As he uh, makes sure that your cage is, is locked tightly, um, he takes a step back from the cage, and it's at this moment that it kind of occurs to you that you shouldn't be in a cage. In fact, why did you get inside of a cage? That was a very silly thing to do, and... Ah, it looks like you're stuck in here now. Uh, this fool intends to cage a dragon? A fat champ! <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, he's gonna, uh, he's gonna do all kinds of shit. Uh, the, the breath weapon, the bite's claws... I'm, I'm gonna go absolutely batshit. Yeah, this is the moment uh, when the cat has been put inside of the carrier. Uh, and yeah. uh, not happy about that. Boxes are cool, but this is drawing a line. And then you started like putting water in the carrier. It's like, oh, hell <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, he is like losing uh, his mind. Yeah, you're losing your mind and you try to breathe out your breath weapon. You, you feel this in instinct, you know, you've got it in you, you know, that dragons can do it and that you can do it. But despite how hard you, you try to build it up, it, it it gets stuck in your throat. In fact, your whole body is beginning to feel uh, numb. Uh, as a man simply watches and he says something. You've never heard him speak when you first met him the first time around. Um, and you have no idea what he just said. This is not a language that you're familiar with, one you've Never even heard spoken in either Plurna or uh, or Ledaria. Uh, but these words have some kind of power over you. Uh, and your body's beginning to just feel so heavy and so difficult to move. And then when he speaks again, you see that even his teeth are, are painted uh, in the way that his vox are. Uh, and when he speaks again, you that feeling you had in your throat of your of your breath weapon being stuck there, it becomes more uh, pronounced. And oh god, you can't breathe. And you you try to cough, and you you try your hardest. Um, you feel like there's something lodged in your throat, and you cough and you cough and you cough until finally, two, you spit something out. Two objects. One is the wand, the one that you traded uh, uh, him for, and the other is your most precious belonging. Uh, you see it uh, uh, roll a little bit and then sort of like slide over the rock as its pyramid shape it doesn't it, it doesn't really allow it to roll much. And up here, the sunlight, it, it, it feels colder up here, despite it being closer to the sun. Uh, but, and you see it shining uh, upon your, your precious gemstone. And the, the shadow that it casts is uh, of many colors. And the ELC takes them, them both up. I think Pontifex is like jamming like an arm like through a, a hole in the grate or something is like frantically trying to reach and like swipe at the the prism on the ground like trying yeah. to claw it back or something you have never fought this hard against your body and 
it occurs to you that it is not your body. And that's why you're struggling so hard to move it. Uh, you extend your one of your front legs, your claw coming inches from your gemstone before the man snatches it up. Um, oh. Then the, as the Evelsi stands up, he points the wand that he just took from you. He points it at you. What the fuck's you're back to being you? Uh, this may be... Eee. Yeah, there we go. Oh no, it is going to be a headache, isn't it? No. Hold on. I got it. I got it. I got it. Uh, <laughs> Alright, get, get your mini in here. Uh, oh, I'm on the wrong side of the table. Some yeah, there we go. Whoops! It landed in a bad place. There we go. Uh, ah. This will also be a headache. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Oh! Okay, hold up. Good enough. And then I take this and I put it... Mm. Uh, ah, yeah, there we go. Hi. The joys of Tabletop Simulator. Uh, the cage is a little tilted, but it's okay. You were rattling it earlier with the might of a dragon. Uh, okay, Pontifex, you are returned to your normal humanoid self. And, and still you feel this... this uh, like the unpleasantness of having coughed up basically a rock and, and a stick, um, it, it stays with you. Although, um, you breathe differently now. Um, so in that regard, you're fine. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Give it back. The Yavelsi reaches for um, a small box uh, more like a chest uh, um, near the base of the tree and he takes out what looks like just a, a rag the kind of you would clean things with um, and he also takes uh, a large blue object um, and he smiles as he, bl as he brings this blue object up in front of his face and you look at yourself for a moment. And you, you realize it's a mask of your face. And it is an uncanny likeness to you. And you remember one of the objects you had given him. Uh, he appears to have carved the mask that you gave him into your likeness and to have painted it and now he looks exactly like you. Uh, and he holds it up in front of his face for just a few seconds, like to to show it to you. Um, and then he lowers his hand and walks towards the edge of this of this floating island, looks down, and tosses the mask down below. Uh, then he holds up the the rag and he turns around and he he gets a little bit closer to you and he starts rubbing it on one of his vox, one of the ones he has on his chin. Uh, and by the time, uh, after a few seconds of this, uh, you see that the paint uh, that uh, uh, is on his vox is, is coming off and it's staining the rag. And when he's done, the, the, vox, uh, the vox in question, it is still colorful but in a different manner when the Yavelsi holds up his his chin a little bit you can see the sun shining through it and reflecting and a different color of light shines through and casts such a, a, a beautiful red shadow uh, upon his neck it matches the material of your gemstone the the of my prism yeah your prism mm. Wait. You are the... Uh, and he's, like, kind of struggling to, to wreck his... He, I think he's still, like, somewhere in between frog and dragon. Mm -hmm. uh, Which is a strange in-between to be in. Yeah. 
You're the lord of the skies or some such. The prism. Um, I just speak he... Uh, really is a check, actually. Oh, okay. Jeez, I'm going hot. You were rolled today. Wow. Yeah, 2017, 18. Okay. That's... Um, he looks like he's paying close attention to what you're saying, but he's also not understanding you. He doesn't know your speech and you don't know his, and he doesn't... There is, like, no recognition of the name, or... Yeah, you're, you're pretty sure he just does not understand a single word. Ah. Uh, that that you just said um and uh, once you're done talking he turns around and uh, he jumps off the ledge and seconds later you see a massive white dragon soaring upward into the sky you didn't know that dragons could get that big. And in the short period of time when he flies directly in front of your eyes and then upward, uh, you can see that this dragon is not just entirely white, uh, but uh, it has uh, horns and uh, um, you would even just straight up call them box. Just these protrusions that are made of gemstone that are made of the material that your prism is made of and when he when he flies up into the sky uh, all these colors shimmer beautifully upon his completely white scales and he's gone up into the clouds above simply leaving you where you are Pontifex, moments later, uh, something big lands behind you. And it is a different dragon. It's far smaller. Uh, its color is, is purple, and it seems to be just made entirely out uh, of gemstones, uh, just like you were moments ago. And uh, it reaches down towards your cage and puts its jaws around one side of it and rips it off the ground. Uh, like, does the cage have a floor in it? Like, am I taking with it, or does he uh, lift the lift it off like a lid? It, it you are you are picked up with it. Um, okay. I, I was I was about to say this is the same thing that happens to 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 squeak <laughs> very often. Um, hmm. Uh, you are inside of this cage, and yeah, the, the cage comes off with like a floor, uh, and the the whole thing is ripped off the rock, and uh, you're you try to hold on, um, and you're getting thrown around a little bit, and uh, the dragon takes the cage in its uh, uh, in its claws, and begins to fly downward. So t you can take your mini back. And I'm going to pack this up. And stop that. And bring back... Nice, pleasant, familiar Simlielon. <laughs> oh well. Did we just lose a party member? <laughs> Look forward to seeing your next character, <laughs> Matt. Uh, oh no, I broke something. My heart. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to throw uh, a piece of art in a Discord channel, and generally I don't use things. Um, I don't use other people's art because this is a stream, so I'm like not using other people's materials. Um, but I do like this one. This is what I've used for inspiration, and this should give you like a a beautiful idea of uh, what you just saw. 
Uh, so I will not be showing wow. this on the stream, uh, but it is a oh. white dragon with like the the teeth are made of gemstone, the eyes. There's like what feels like almost like droplets of gemstones that go <coughs> down its face, and it is otherwise completely white uh, with golden runes upon its scales. That's so cool. Oh, that's so cool. The oh. teeth, the eye. The silver claw is broken. I see it up here. Yeah, it's way up there. <laughs> oh. Oh no, the silver claw. Talix is in it. Ah, damn it. Okay, yeah, when this happens, I have to, to reload. Um, I don't think... I think... I think... I think this will do. Should be good. Should be good. Should be good. Although, it, it may take you a while to, to load back. Uh, I apologize. Uh, we're bringing this back, and then I pack it. I hope this works. Build. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, okay. oh dear lord. Oh, oh, ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's here. Oh, zero mail. Oh, there's a mail bag in here. There's a Tekka bag. Oh no, a do you think she turn around? Yeah. Uh, oh god, okay. I'm pulling a map out of the map bag. I'm sorry. I was trying to All move right. the bag. Yeah, no, give I'm me give me a me. moment. I will need to restart this. Uh, <laughs> you want to go and break for five more minutes, guys? <laughs> no. no. Speaking of, uh, how, how much do how much time do you guys have? How much longer uh, do you have to go? About an hour and a half max. Yeah, could go a little long. That works for me. Yep. Okay. Let me just restart ETS. Oh, there's no music while I'm doing this. Oh, there's a tabletop simulator main music. Oh, I see. I oh, I I, I see that Jason is messaging on Discord. Yeah. <laughs> WTF is happening. <laughs> <laughs> My recap notes are getting out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> he wanted the refund. Seems like kind of a waste of the mask if you're just gonna throw it off the the island. He could have kept it as a souvenir, <laughs> framed it. Well, maybe he doesn't care about it now. It's that because the mask let you like basically scry on whoever it right. looked. Like. So he used to scry on Pontifex and then basically yeah, it means the he's whole not thing planning of to leave you alive. <laughs> yeah, well, or he doesn't care. He has the he has that prism. The the thing that Pontifex has that's that must have been a very him. important scale of his. <laughs> yeah, that was my belly scale. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called? What's the the scale in like a snake called? And it's like the the special one. There's like one specific scale on a, and it's super important to them. Uh, let me Google it. Special snake. It's scale. like a it's like the key scale or something like that. There are dorsal or coastal scales. Mm. There's the vertebral scales and the ventral scales. Now, it's one particular scale. It's not like a group of them. Um, I'll have to find okay. The one special scale a snake has. Okay. The server is back up.
Maybe I'm misremembering something. I could have swore there's like one particular scale on a snake's, like it's on their head or like under their jaw. It's like a, like a really important one. In it. Maybe I'm misremembering. Maybe it's not snakes. Maybe it's something else. <laughs> okay, so we're we're back. Everything is good. I hope. Um, if anything exploded on your table, so you let me know. Um, hey, you're not finding yes. Pontifex anywhere. Well, at the very least, the dragon seems to be gone. Yeah, the dragon left. So, thank God. Um, I think we're okay. No yeah. more of that troublesome blue dragon. <laughs> People are <laughs> freaking out a little bit, but... Pip is also realizing that he can't find any of his friends. <laughs> <laughs> you th at least you were pretty sure the brook was going to be at a tavern, but you go there and he's not. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Pip's just like... Pip is the lost well, child at the mall. Yeah. That throwback was weird. To, and then goes throwback, back to... <laughs> throwback to a few days ago, nobody is left behind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> hmm. um, Pip is like, I have a gift for pot effects. I, I wonder when I'll see him again. <laughs> Um, th this will be about the time when uh, Tekka uh, received the, the... No, I'm getting ahead of myself. Nope. Okay, okay. <laughs> timeline, timeline. Alright, so Pip is again the only person who sees the second dragon. Um, oh no. The, this one, uh, this beautiful purplish color. Um, and like the previous one, it, it glistens just like uh, the gemstones you just bought. Uh, and, and this is flying down from the sky. And uh, then a small distance away from the city uh, to the south. And shortly after that, you see it again fly up into the sky. Uh, Pontifex, from from your cage, um, you have you saw the ground uh, from really high above as you were being brought back to to the ground, and you know that if this dragon loses its grip on a cage at any moment, that's a death sentence. You no longer have wings, uh, and the dragon is not very gentle with depositing the cage to the ground, but at least he doesn't toss you from a distance higher than just just a few feet off, uh, off uh, from from the dirt. Uh, and you bounce in your metal cage a little bit. Uh, you're, it, it takes you a little bit to to, to catch your breath and uh, um, realize that the dragon is gone, but you're still locked in here. Uh, I think the professor is just like, you know, he wasn't standing in the cage the whole time. He was probably like, you he know, laid, like, yeah, sat down to, to, yeah, not be tossed around and hold on to something. Uh, and once he's landed, he's probably just like flopped out onto his back, like laying down and not moving and just like thinking in silence. Okay. Yep. Contemplating existence. Yeah. Decompressing. Mm -hmm. uh, Heka. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not too far from where you are, uh, as you had found a, a, a place away from the city to uh, to read your your mother's letter, and you you thought you saw a glimpse of of something in the sky for a moment. Um. Hold on a moment. There we go. 
Um, you thought you saw a glimpse of something in the sky for a moment and you weren't really sure, maybe you imagined it, but there is something a small distance away from you that you hadn't seen before and it's actually a really strange landmark down here. Uh, something looks like a big metal cage. Uh, yeah, Tekka will probably move closer, but standing by the tree in cover and to sort of look. Yeah, just cautiously that. from a distance looking at it. Uh, um, until you recognize the blue cloak and the blue skin of, of, of Pontifex. His armor glistening like the metal that uh, the cage is in. Uh, with that, Tekka will slowly move forward into the open but we'll definitely be looking around for any like ambushes or definitely feels like a trap yeah well if if it's not a trap for you it was definitely a trap for pontifex <laughs> like you imagine like maybe he stepped into something that was meant to catch an animal um a little unusual but yeah you you keep you keep your guard up and slowly approach. You seem to be on your own here. Teacher, why are you out here? Uh, I think Pontifex is visibly crying. <laughs> like he's on his back, like his eyes are closed, like he's in meditation, but there's just like visible like streams of tears coming down like the sides of his head down to where his not ears would be. Uh, Welcome back to my campaign, man. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, and I don't think he reacts. I think he's just staying there and like his, his eyes are a little like puffed up and just like actively sobbing. Something is wrong. I will get you out. Uh, and the attacker will start inspecting the cage. Uh, there's a latch or a door. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a big latch uh, with a lock on it. It's I put it a little rusty, but it looks still sturdy. Uh, yeah, then I think Tekka will attach the spring load attachment to his quarterstaff. And we'll sort of try to lock it within the sides of the lock and then spring the mechanism. You trying to break it? Yep. <laughs> uh, okay. So the, the DC for that is just for you to hold on to it, right? Uh, otherwise it just happens. Right. Okay, okay, okay. Let me, let me reread the spring loaded bar attachment. Um. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to make a roll for the damage. Uh, you get it eventually. Um, at first, you're, uh, it, it takes you a few tries to, uh, to break this thing made of metal, but you, you find a good angle to basically uh, stick your staff between the ground and the lock um, and just... Um, let the let the spring attachment uh, do its job, and it hits it, it hits a lock and tries to take it with it. Um, and it's you can see that the the metal of the lock is beginning to loosen a little bit, and you do it from a different angle and then a different angle still until it just breaks in half. Uh, uh, your staff yeah. is a little dented on one end now. Fair, more than fair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Tekka will immediately open the door and uh, take a hand to Pontifex's shoulder. Teacher, what have they done? Oh, they've done so much. We should not stay in the open. Here, lead on my shoulder. Uh, hey, yeah, we'll try to okay. carry... Uh, Pontifex up to to his feet, and uh, yeah, out of this clearing. Okay. Uh, we can make this roughly the time when uh, the party is beginning to reunite. Uh, 
uh, mm -hmm. at the Dragon Wagon, Pip. You, you've been searching restlessly for the rest of the group, and by the time you come back at the Dragon Wagon again, everybody else is there. They weren't there before. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey! Brooke has a friend uh, that is as tall as he is. Who are um, you? Why are you crying? Uh, the app mm. effects is is leaning on uh, on uh, um, on Pekka for support. Uh, here is fine. Thank you, Tekka. And he's gonna like slump off of him, like up against the wall. <clears throat> it seems he was ambushed, locked in a cage outside the city. Did you guys see the dragon? No. It is fine. Don't worry about the dragon. <laughs> there were two of them. I know. There was a <laughs> blue one that went up to the arena, and then there was a purple one that came down, and it swooped down to the ground, and then went back up again. Pip, I know. How do you know? Where were I, you? I was the blue dragon, damn it. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> the, 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 the other furball that's with Brooke says, uh, says, maybe I should meet your friends later. Uh, I'll look, I'll, I'll be in the tavern, just okay. come get me whenever. Um, and he actually goes to the goat boat. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. The goat boat, the best <laughs> deity. Yeah, I wasn't pissed at him before, but I'm now mad. <laughs> <laughs> that was the betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most shocking thing that happened all session. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you mean you were the blue dragon? I don't know. What I, do you mean you don't know? We were at the... Uh, I'm in a lot of pain I mentally, emotionally, and physically. Uh, do we when we were... Oh, and the sad music is playing in my head. What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing my marbles, Pip. I may need to borrow some. Yeah, no, sure. I... The wand, the thing, you know, with the Yavelsi from a time back, and we gave him the mask for yeah, the wand I wanted so really, desperately. really, really powerful and amazing wand that we yes, traded so much really, of our good things for. Yes, that one. It was worth it. It was more worth it than I knew. And, and I, I thought I figured out something because there was so much to this one. And I figured out something and I thought it, it could let me do this uh, spell I have read about where you can turn them into animals or some such. Uh, so well, I signed up for the tournament and I wanted to go look at the arena, you understand. So I thought, hey... What a better time to test than now. So I tried to, you know, turn into the first flying creature that came to my mind. A red beak. But I didn't. It did not turn me into a red beak. I turned into a dragon. And I was young and powerful and prideful. And it was wonderful. So I flew and I looked at the arena and I didn't care because I was a dragon. It didn't matter anymore. And then I was going to come home down here and show you all. But then I didn't. I just... Like I was called into the sky. So I did. I flew, and I flew, and I flew higher than I ever thought possible. And I went above the clouds, and... Uh, Newsflash, there's a whole other world up there. Uh, it's floating pieces of land with water and trees, and there's other gem dragons just everywhere. 
and I was called to one rock, and there was there was a place just for me. Uh, it was a cozy uh, little box that was just right for me. So I went to it. It was home. But I was deceived. Uh, and that Yavelsi was there. And I was trapped inside of this box, the cage that Tekka found. Uh, and then I, I tried to fight my way out, but I couldn't. And then he said something and I felt sick. And then I, I coughed up uh, the wand and my, my prism, the thing from my childhood. Uh, and he took them, he took them both. And he showed the mask that he had the car to look like me. He was using it to track me, I suppose. And then he threw the mask from the sky and he took back the wand and he turned me back this old shriveled up pitiful self. And he took my prism and he left. He, he turned into the, a, the biggest dragon I have ever seen, white and covered in those prisms. He, the the, the Yavelsi was the lord of the sky or something absurd. And then another dragon, uh, the gems, uh, took me back here. And I have nothing. So how was your day? But... But if he was this big powerful dragon, why didn't he just... Why didn't he just take it from you from the start? I don't know. Maybe he did. It's, he wanted me to be hurt, and I am. I I understand the dragon before said that this scale, the prism, is a scale or something that belongs to the Lord of the Sky. Whatever. I get it. It's his scale, but it's my prism. What? Where'd you get that thing anyway? From my parents. Whenever I was found by my adoptive parents, they said they found me with it. It was the only possession I had. And he took it. Is there any way we can track him? No, he took it, he took the wand. And he's... He's so high up in the sky. I don't even. I don't even know where he went. He's so ridiculously big that if we could see him, we would. Like he dwarfs the arena. He's big as shit, Brook. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pontifex. I don't need uh, sorry. I need my prism and my wand. And I, I need, I need that feeling again. Professor, I don't, I don't think you're old and shriveled up. But... I'm so old and so shriveled and so weak. And you're not, uh, you're not so weak, Professor. Apparently, you, no. You, you do such amazing things, and you've, you've taught me a lot, and. No, I thought I was amazing too, but I'm not. It, it, like the the curtains have been pulled back on what it could be and what it should be. Not you meant to be down here wallowing amidst the common folk, dabbling in this pitiful things we call magic. I have a tournament where we play games with this. Hobbling around. That is what life should be. Is up there. With the pond and the other dragons and the box just for me. I don't know what to do. <clears throat> uh, 
find a way back up? How do I get back up there? I can't fly. I, mean, I can barely up, walk. You got up there the first time. Uh, with the wand. It didn't even use my own power. It, it had <laughs> its own. It wasn't even me. No, I can't do it. Do you... Do you need that prism to know what the... What the world is made of or something like that? I don't know. It's something important, but, but above all else, it is mine. It is the only thing that is truly mine. Everything else I have just acquired or earned or bought throughout life, but that is the one that it was mine from the beginning. It's the only thing I have of my parents. It is what drove me to my study. It was we'll, everything. We'll get it back. Right? How? Right, Brooke? Right, Tekka? Talix? We'll get it back. No, you don't understand. You don't know how powerless we really are until you've tasted what it is to not be. And even in that state, in the best version of myself, I was still helpless before this lord. Well, we met him once. So... And I thought him a go. fool. I thought they pulled something over on him by threading him mask for this piece, this wand, this thing. And I, I was so proud of myself for scamming him. Hmm. And it was not. I, it was I who was scammed. Well, let's just put it on the list of things we want to do. We're planning on traveling... Well beyond the peninsula, so don't give up hope. Who knows what's out there? I know what's out there. I know what's up there. And like it's right there. If you could just see, if the clouds would just move, you would see what I saw. And it was beautiful. And it was safe. Um, I, I can't offer you much, Professor, to, to help you replace what you lost, but I, I did get you something. Remember the store back in Urca? No, not particularly. I don't remember much right now. Oh, um, well, I know that that this one that you had was really really cool but um but i got you one too and he pulls out of his pouch uh, um this little metal wand and he puts it on the table in front of him and then he says uh, look look professor this part comes out and when you slide it out it becomes a letter opener you like letters right i have some you can read them do you want to write a letter? Yes. Okay. Uh, here, let me get a piece of paper. Um, okay. Right at I the don't top. Need a pen. I have unlimited magical ink. Yeah, you do. I do. Cause, Cause you're really, you're really cool. Right at the top. Um. So cool. The dear, person at the tournament wanted my autograph. Dear Professor Pontifex, write it up. Uh, dear Professor Pontifex, Vasdalos Olenach. Comma. Uh -huh. You are enough. You are weak. No, cross that out. <laughs> he crosses it up. You are slow. No. <laughs> Professor. 
you are more than what you have. This isn't working. Take it from someone that didn't grow up with much, Professor. You've got a lot up there. Points at your, your head. I think he pulls back his, his hood where you're pointing and reveals all the scars on his head. You're making this a lot worse. <laughs> yes, I do have this, don't I? I've always been weak. Guys, can you help Seems me out these here? these bad things just keep <laughs> happening to me. Hmm. <clears throat> Why don't you write a letter for him? Okay. Um, can I use your quill, Professor? I don't know if it works. You just Hold used on, let it. Let me check my features one moment. <laughs> 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 I don't know if you can actually. I have no idea if you can, like if someone else can write with it. You can, uh, you create, can create it with a quill, bonus action. It, blah, blah, blah. When Again. you write with it, but I think what are you I think looking you at? It Professor? Over. disappears if I create another one or if I die. Yeah, what if I die over. mentally? <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, it looks like it is fine. Give it to me. Come on. He's like, hold it out. And like, when you grab it, he's like, not I'll gonna let go. It and back. you have to like, tug of war a little bit before he lets go. Dear Professor. Uh, P. Dot. <laughs> you are enough you are special all these words are misspelled <laughs> you are blue right now but things will get better and guess what before your magic tournament which you're gonna win Pip is gonna teach you a magic trick and he'll help you get your cat back so that you can have someone to snuggle with here you now just let me roll that up and I'll put it in the mail for you do you need my world point card yeah Okay, you can look, but you can't have it. Here's your quill back. Thanks. And he'll stick it in the little astrolabe. You feel better? No, I haven't got it in the mail yet. Oh shoot, <laughs> hold on. And there's a process. Pip walks to the door and opens it and then leaves and then uses disguise self to look like a mailman, a male bird, <laughs> and then walks back in. And then Squeak says, A letter for Pontifex Vastalusalnak. Pip holds it out. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, look, mail. My favorite. Oh, are you Pontifex? Uh, the am. famous Pontifex. Yep. Well, can I have your autograph? Sure, and he's gonna sign his forehead. <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I don't think that'll come off. It won't. Shh, shh. And Pip leaves. Drops this guy's self, comes back. Yeah. Oh, gonna... well, Professor, I saw the male bird come. He still spun it back to this autograph right across his forehead. <laughs> yeah, I bet you did. You're a good child, Pip. I bet that one day you will grow up to be something great and powerful and strong and capable. Yeah. Like Professor P. I would never wish that fate upon anyone. 
but uh, thank you for the gesture. I will keep this letter for when I need it most. I, uh, I have a wizard tournament tomorrow to prepare for, so I think I'm going to retire a little early if that is okay. Sorry to ruin the reuniting with your friend, Brooke. Uh, it's okay. He'll be a bit. He'll be here for around a bit. Maybe you can even watch it tomorrow. Maybe. Um, you wanna... You wanna, um, learn how to get your cat? Yeah, that could be good. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's go up to the room. I'll I'll teach you. Okay. Sure. Hey, good night, everyone. <laughs> good night, Pontifex. Then. Brooke and Tekka and Talix just left to glance at one another. Oh. With Brooke. <clears throat> yeah. What's up, Tekka? Those phantom cages hold a magic. True. Could yeah. Some of them. Pontifex have been trapped in the cage with magic, warping his mind. The story of dragons. I have been told no one has been in the skies. It could be. It sounds like it, right? Like, otherwise Pontifex is surely strong enough to get out of the cage. This is magic. So it had to be something like that. It is true, though, that his stone is gone. We don't know who has it. I wish there was a way to track it somehow. But, at least for now, I can't think of any. The thing seems pretty important to Pontifex. What about the tower? Can that be replicated? You mean... <clears throat> on top of each other? Multiple towers? No. <laughs> Our common person could track items. Oh. Oh. Yeah. This yeah, solstice has brought powerful people here. This could be a chance. That's yeah. Damn. Maybe we should have said that to him. Maybe that would have cheered him up. Mm. Uh, Talix has the item in question. You're talking about the orb, yeah? Yeah, but we're uh, also in the tavern, so Tekka did not want to outright say anything. Yes, yes. No, that makes perfect sense. Just make yeah. sure I understood. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And with, uh, Pontifex had, in, had identified it, and Talix can tell you that it can only track items that it has been bound to. Right. So you could bind a new item to it, but you'd need to have it right now. Right. Hmm. Was a good idea. Maybe I... it could be useful in the future, though. Maybe we'll find some hints. Like, if this was such an important item, right? Surely we'll hear about that again. 
I have never heard of this Yavelsi trader before, if we take this story to be true. Hmm. I have one other plan. I will tell teacher tomorrow. I do not believe it will work. I mean, even if it's just for his mood, I think you should still try. I'll see if I can think of something better. Yeah. So, Brooke, the person you arrived here with. Oh! What? Yeah. His name is Leo, and funnily enough, he is one of the people I served in the war with. And I thought he was dead, but he got revived. Revived? Like what we saw in this very city. Yeah, exactly. Like that. And just... Out of... Or... Like Grangina told us about, right? Right. So... He's now here. And I know Telex, you want to talk to him. Because... He is a cleric of the snake now, so... Mm -hmm. And Talis would say that he... the... the he had given you a... a, a leaf, right? Was it a yeah, leaf or was it a piece of... It okay. was a leaf. Ah, so like he had received it, but he just ended up getting caught in some other things, and then once he got to the dragon wagon, you were in there. <clears throat> well, he said... For whatever reason, he's over in the... goat <laughs> boat? <laughs> so <if> you... <laughs> If you wanted to, we could go over in a second and talk to him. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure to I'm pretty sure he will be around tomorrow. So if you have any questions, you can ask him then. It's It's weird. I don't know. It's I did not expect to see him again. He was supposedly dead for 50 years. Uh, the decision of whether to go to talk to him now or later is probably going to be in the air Well, yeah. Jason isn't here. Though, well, yeah. it will be easier if it was like tomorrow and everybody mm -hmm. could be there. Yeah. So maybe we can go with that. I think that's the right choice. And we can see, in the meanwhile, Pip and Pontifex, uh, what they what? are up to. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, there was more. <laughs> I, I apologize, I should have asked. Uh... Go ahead. After they decide to do it tomorrow. How, how have your days been? Like, what have you been up to? I do not like the city as it is now. I stepped outside. It felt like a day I used to have. It was good. Good day? Nice. A day without fighting. It's nice, right? I feel <sighs> we will not have many of those. I agree, but I hope that we don't get as little as possible. Like, you can hold your own pretty well, Tekken. I'm, I'm not sure how or where le you learned all that from, but no offense to you, Telix, or the others, you're not really fighters, right? So I hope we get as little as possible. Yeah. 
you can speak where I cannot. That is another strength. Hmm. I do not know much about your friend, Brooke, but I will think for tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yes. I so we have talked a lot, but I still have a lot to ask. It's quite a bit to take in, honestly. Um, yeah, tomorrow. Maybe after Pontifex win, dinner on me, invite <laughs> everyone, and then we can just see what information or what questions you want answered. I do not look forward to this competition, but I will see what it is about. There must be a reason all have gathered here. I haven't seen this yet either, but in general, looking at strong sorcerers or magicians fight or just show off their skills, it's... You know, for people like us who, if they fight or do stuff, we do stuff with our hands. But they're able to create something out of more or less nothing. So it's always cool to see what people have come up with and how they have progressed. You might like it. Uh, a question to the DM. In the tavern, like, is it unusually crowded? Are people betting on the competition tomorrow? Like, what's the vibe <laughs> in here? Um, well, it's, the vibe is different now. After a couple of dragons have been spotted in and, and around the colony. Um, most people are, were... were uh, earlier today, the conversations were mostly about the upcoming competition and yes, some people are placing bets uh, but right now everybody's just talking about these dragons that showed up and um, you know, now, now that you're paying attention to um, to what other people are saying you're starting to hear these these rumors, you didn't see any dragons, but like the, it matches what Pip and Pontifex said about having seen too Maybe there is reason to believe the story after all. If dragons are closing in, it cannot be for good. Think so? I Why? do not know. Oh. Dragons do not come down to the ground. That is what I am. If they are now, there must be a reason. So we should rest well for tomorrow. I fear this is not over. Perk lets out a big sigh. <sighs> Just one piece. Oh well, uh, I will go to bed soon enough, but if you guys want to meet up with Leo tomorrow, I will probably head for the rest of the night over, and then see you tomorrow. Good rest, Brooke. Good rest, Dalex. Okay. As for Pontifex and Pip? Um, Pip uh, sits down in the room on the floor and gestures for Pontifex to sit down. He does. Pip says... I think before... he's, like, taken off his armor and stuff at this point so he can, like, move a little bit more comfortably. When I was trying to tell you before how to summon your cat, 
your flying cat back? I just said to concentrate real hard and focus on the connection you have. But then I realized yeah. that you don't really have much of a connection there yet. Right, that's what I said. I don't well, get it. Do you remember how I always need to bring Squeak back? It's not just forming the magic circle and then saying poof and then there he is. What I have to do is I have to focus on who it is that I'm bringing back. Yeah, you have to say my name. Right. I have to say his name over and over and over again. So does your winged cat have a name? I mean, no, I've seen the cat like uh, three times. I've never asked her name. Then that's what you need to get. You need to think real hard on this cat's name. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, I'll. I'll do that. I'll think about it, I guess. Now! Oh. Well, how am I supposed to just know her name? You just know! When Squeak first came to me, uh. When Squeak first came to me, Granny said, uh, that I would just know his name. Aha. Uh, -huh. uh, okay. Hey, I'll just start taking shots in the dark, I suppose. Or do I just, like, chant it, or... Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Annoying little shit. Poof. Uh, f uh, snowball. Poof. Uh, nope. This isn't working. Yeah, I lied. Actually, I lied. Um, Granny just told me his name. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um right, okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, try. This is hard. It's not it this is hard. It is hard. I don't know how you do it so easily. Okay, let's try this. <laughs> Pip's just going to try going through just every little thing he can think of, of, uh, of how Find Familiar works, at least as far as Pip is concerned, the way he does it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, In the... Go ahead. Matt, it, it is up to you when slash if Pontifex gets what is missing. Uh, I think that he like goes through the motions with Pip for a while until like, Pip is getting visibly frustrated and is thus <laughs> making Pontifex visibly frustrated and they probably have an argument and then probably go their separate ways oh, as no! they tend to do. Oh, no. <laughs> As they always inevitably do. We've like uh, lit no. ten candles at this point, with burning incense, and <laughs> the whole room smells like oh, a the smells bed, like bath, gun and body powder. Works. This is the worst. <laughs> oh no! Uh, and so I think they got the whole thing, and then, uh, whatever. Uh, but I do think that he's got like a nugget that a name is important. Okay. Uh, and I think it like kind of on his own, like throughout the night until he falls asleep, he's going to be like just running through scenarios in, her, in his head and like writing down mental notes and just like thinking. Okay. But yeah, so I think there's some progress, but I don't think he's able to call her just yet. All right. <laughs> then um, this would be... The moment where me, we move on to something else. Uh, Pip, it's... It's a, it's a little bit frustrating, especially because you know how smart and how knowledgeable the professor is. Uh, I mean, he is the expert in magic. He should be the <laughs> one teaching you how to do magic. Uh, none of your magic has been... Has been learned you didn't study it you just kind of figured it out and 
it should come really easily to him. Um, and you're not, you're not in, used to teaching things to other people. Uh, and ev eventually, you're just too tired um, to figure this one out. You tried your best, but you go to sleep tired, a little frustrated, and kind of confused too from all the from from what apparently happened today um uh, closing your eyes in in bed last uh, uh last mental image that sticks with you is that of of the the blue dragon flying up in the sky uh just thinking about it and uh, wondering what it all means and how you can fix it and now you can help Pontifex feel better. You tried and... Well, you haven't seen him smile yet. And your your dreams end up being a little... Um, they're not the most pleasant. They're not nightmares, but they are they are uh, stress dreams. Uh, a little bit. You dream that you're in the spell casting competition and you did not prepare for it at all. And at some point you realize you're not even wearing pants and it's embarrassing and everyone is laughing no. at you. Um, and then you, you run out of the arena and you feel like you have a pretty good idea where you're going. Um, you find a new pair of pants on the way and you put them on and then keep on going. And you you recognize the path that you are walking. Uh, you've you've been to the west of Simlielon uh, before, and uh, you're strolling through these beautiful green hills. Uh, the grass is tall and it's speckled with colorful flowers. And uh, yeah, you you recognize this place. And the more you look at it, and the further you go, the more you you're beginning uh, you're beginning to remember and you recognize uh, the the beautiful sky painted in shades of red and purple and the river that uh, uh, isn't just a river but it's like a snake it moves across the plains and it just slithers away from you uh, you see uh, one particular tree with pink leaves um and as you as you reach it and you, you kind of have this this awareness um it feels almost like you're awake um you, you, you no longer have that dream fog uh in your mind and uh somebody calls for you the voice of a of a young boy a small tiefling with with pink skin um waving at you and saying hi you came back well Oh, hey! Wait, to squeak with me? Uh, yes! And, like, <laughs> think, when you think about it, uh, you, you look down and you're holding the little cage that Squeak is trapped in. Um, and he is very annoyed that this keeps happening to him over and over. Not again. Um... Haven't seen you in a while. Am I... Am I in the dream world? Well, yeah. That's the only place where I can be. But no one else is here. I am here. And I was getting bored, so it's really nice that you're here. Well, this doesn't happen every time I dream. No, but I was bored and I wanted to see people and I called and I called and you heard my name. Huh. Ah, you heard my voice. What did I just say? <laughs> DM. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Tired. <laughs> I got this. Dip <laughs> water. Alright, let's resume. You heard my voice. Um, yeah. So, how you been? Well, nothing happens here. And nobody's ever hanging out with me. But now we can play. What do you want to play? Uh, can you teach me a game? Mmm, you like marbles? Do you know what a marble is? <laughs> marble. Marble. 
It's fun to say. Uh, here. Wait, do I have them? Hold on. What do I have here? Can I make uh. anything? <laughs> um, y you look for your marbles, and at first uh, they're not there, but then you consider that possibility, um, and you think really hard about your, your bag <laughs> of marbles. Um, there it is. And uh, uh, you check your you check your belt again, and you find uh, you find a pouch. Well, I'm not gonna stop at marbles then. There's more marbles than you remember. Pink unicorn with wings. Huh. You look around, really excited about this. It's it's it doesn't show up. Oh. Well, that's not fair. Well, uh, let me help you. And he's going to take your hand. Um, and he says, uh, 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 Viz says, Okay, uh, a unicorn, you said? Yeah. With wings? And pink. And pink. So it looks like me? Yeah. Okay, I can do that. Uh, but I don't know what a unicorn is. Uh, it's a horse with one horn. In the front. Like On my its horse? Head? Yeah. But just one. Yeah, and like... Like, spirally. Okay. Okay. Okay, alright. Uh, and you both think about it, uh, and uh, moments later you hear uh, this loud neigh directly behind you. Uh, it's... Even better than you imagined it. Uh, the the horn is not quite what you thought it was going to be, but it's um, it, it's just like the the horns that Viz has, which are shaped like the ones of a pronghorn. Um, it's just one of those in the middle of its forehead. So it's slightly off, but it's it's beautiful and it's this bright pink color that. No animals in nature should ever be. And its wings are awesome. so wide and feathery. This is great, Viz. <laughs> well, uh, it's... It's really easy for me. And you're around, so it's... <clears throat> so it's even easier. I wish I could tell you I'd visit more often, but I don't really even know how I got here. What do you mean? You could do this... You could do this every night. Really? Yeah. You're not like other people. I'm... I'm not? Well, no. You're like... Well, you're made of dreams. A little bit. Not fully like me. I'm only dreams. But you're like a little bit dreams. I don't get it. How can I be made of dreams? Cause, um... Um... Viz tilts his head to the side, looking for the words and any shrugs. I don't know. How do people get made? Um... Mm hmm. Well, it doesn't I mean, matter. Let's, that... let's go on a, on a unicorn. Okay. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? We can go can anywhere. Can we go anywhere? Yeah. Well, I can't, but I can try. I could show you Lita. Wait. Pontifex said that there's a place high above the clouds. You want to try that? <clears throat> um, we can't go above the clouds. Why not? Because that's how the world works. You, 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 they're separated, and I am not allowed to go where the clouds are. Because we're made of dreams? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get it. Dreams stay with the dreams, and the water stays with the sea. 
And the clouds stay with the sky. And then there's people. That stay on the ground. You know the lady of the land, right? Well, I... Yeah? Do you know... I, I think we asked you this last time, but... Do you know what the Rayra are? Mm, no. Well, the Lady of the Land asked us to find them, and I don't think we've found a single one yet. Well, you're doing a really bad job, then. I know! <laughs> let's try and find one. Let's just... Let's just go. Uh, okay. Whoa, the tree's moving! <laughs> I forgot I had, like, a fan <laughs> that I could turn on. <laughs> That's so cool! Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I think I had it all last time. It works on the grass, too, if you really zoom in. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> like, man, that tree's really jiggling. It's really squirming. <laughs> um. Okay, so... This nods and he starts, um, he struggles to get uh, on top of the unicorn slash Pegasus. Uh, and while he's dangling, like he's, he's got his belly onto the horse and his limbs are dangling, the arms on one side and the legs on the other. And he's like kicking, trying to get up. Um, while he's in the process of doing this, he says, Oh, uh, yeah, by the way, I, I forgot to tell you something. Mm? Uh, your friend came over. Who? Your, um, mm, your friend. I didn't ask his name, I forgot. Was he small? Was he... No, he was big. Um, I don't have that many friends, so that should narrow it down. Well, like... Did he have red hair? Uh, he, I just... I was he blue? Hmm... I just told him like that because he was looking for you and he couldn't find you anymore. And I told him that it's okay because he's gonna find something uh, that it's going to help him find you. And uh, uh, then he left and he was nice to talk to. Wait, 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 wait. Was he wearing a cloak? Did he not talk much? Did he? Did was he had? A, did he have a mask on? Um. We talked. Oh, yeah, he had these these red box. They looked like gemstones. Wait, what? Bastard. And 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 I told him that he'd he'd be able to find you. And I told him where he'd be able to find the thing that can find you. Um. Oh uh, wait. It's okay, right? I don't... I don't know if I know this guy, but he said he was a friend? Mm-hmm. I think he said he was a friend. Maybe he didn't. It's been a while. Okay. Do I know this guy? <laughs> <laughs> uh... Is is Austin being stupid right now? <laughs> Box made of rubies. Box made of rubies. Oh crap! Oh <laughs> shit! Ah, jeez! <laughs> no! Hey, turn him away! If he he's not my friend. <laughs> it took me a little bit. <laughs> I'm very tired. I'm literally sleeping right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Pip, as as it is, this anxiety is starting to take to take hold of your chest. You just feel um, uh, this this panic gripping at your throat uh, as you realize, no, 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 this, this is not this is not a friend. <laughs> this is not a friend at all. <laughs> you shouldn't find us. Um, these gestures of uh, he st he's still stuck on the. Uh, on the Pegasus unicorn, uh, he gestured just ahead, and, and he says, "Well, I already told him. I already told him what's going to happen, and I think he's doing it like right now." 
You told him where to find us? No, I told him where to find the thing that will let him find you. Yeah, take me there. Ah, it's right over here. He he gestures ahead, and it it looks like the world, uh, this this field of grass, ends just a few feet over. And you're pretty sure there was more landscape there before, but now there's instead sort of like a a, a small drop. And looking down, uh, what you see is a place that's in. Uh, it's nighttime there, uh, unlike the place where you're at, where it's uh, uh, it's bright. And uh, l- looking down, it's uh, it's not too dissimilar in the sense that it is a grassy field, uh, though it is speckled with trees, which uh, uh, besides a pink one, you don't have on your on your side. Uh, and you can see a a cloaked figure near uh, sitting in front of a campfire. Um, just uh, uh, cooking himself some food. Uh, he's shivering a little bit, and he, uh, you see him uh, hold his cloak a little bit tighter to his body. And uh, uh, then you hear a loud thump, something hard hitting the ground, and he he jumps, startled. He he's on his feet in a moment, and he he looks to the side where something just fell next to him, and you can see from that distance high above that it's. It's a mask that looks exactly like Pontifex's face. And that's what? where we're going to end the session. Oh, oh that was amazing. <laughs> wow. Really bringing everything together. We're in trouble. Yeah. Huh. Oh, he's really close, too. <laughs> yeah. Ah, I'm so sorry, Matt, that this is the thing you came back to. Yeah. I was all excited for my <laughs> wand. <laughs> and then it turned uh, to a dragon, and I was like, oh, this is so cool. And then you're like, no, you get nothing. <laughs> And you can't if, you, right. if you refresh your card <laughs> <and> sheet, <laughs> Pontifex, you'll find that the wand is gone. <laughs> oh. <laughs>, <laughs> Laughs evilly. <laughs> yeah, that was cruel. Uh, but you got a letter opener wand now. <laughs> is it actually a wand? Like, is it it's, usable as a focus, or is it or just a letter no. opener that looks like a wand? It's just a letter opener. <laughs> From okay, the toy I store. can put that next to my other letter opener. <laughs> you could probably make it into a focus. Put a gem on the tip of that bad boy. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's true, technically. I, I got rid of my gem for the wand. <laughs> my diamond. On the, in my diamond on the staff, I gave the whole thing oh, as, no. as part of the deal for the wand. So, like, I don't think I have a focus. Oh, uh, well, no, no. I can use my spellbook as a focus. <laughs> oh man, oh, great class. session okay, so right there. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, holy crap, I... my my recap is, is this is probably the longest one ever. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to trim this a bit because or else this is gonna be like a 15 minute exposition. There's there's a few people in chat right now that some of you are going to recognize. There's Lord Laylips. There's 404. Oh, oh, hey. oh. Thanks, thanks for friends. Coming by. Yeah. Oh, let me head over there. I was having internet stuttering, so I wasn't in the in a thing. Uh, but yeah. Oh, I forgot to do I, this. I really thought we were gonna do this go. <laughs> tournament today. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Oops. Almost. Uh, it's such a shame you don't get to do it with your wand. <laughs> <laughs> you Sorry, know, I, buddy. I thought you you were gonna use the polar morph spell during the tournament. It was. Kinda how I thought it was going to happen. It's probably better that it didn't happen. Yeah. That would have been a weird interruption to the <laughs> tournament. <laughs> oh, Matt, thank you. It's been like months. I've just been sitting on. You went on vacation, <laughs> and at no point do you owe me anything. Ah, oh, I, I appreciate well, it. Well, not now. <laughs> now we're enemies. <laughs> now it's player versus DM mode. Now no. you're the bad guy. Now is the part where 
This is the part of the story where Pontifex is at its, lo at its lowest and uh, he needs to overcome this and he needs to grow to become a better person. This is the hero's journey. Yes. Uh -huh. And, uh, and that, so that you can earn your happy ending. There is no happy ending for men like me. <laughs> I, uh, I do I did not, not deserve to be happy. <laughs> I did not remember Viz's name. I was like looking through the summaries and I realized that it was actually never said because Jamuel or uh, Orm was not there. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true, yeah. I was like, where is it? V <laughs> V-I-S Viz. V-I-S Viz. Okay, no, well, I'm gonna let you all go. Thank you all for playing. Thank you for everyone who stopped by uh, on the stream and uh, uh, we're we're going to discuss when our next session is going to be. Uh, nice. well, we will figure it out on Discord. But yeah. Good night, everyone. Bye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Bye. Boop. Stream over. Epic session, Winter. Yeah. yeah. No kidding. <laughs> Very sad that Jason could not be here for this one. That was yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> um, maybe we'll be okay. So here's the deal with Jason's schedule. Um, he doesn't have a set day that he gets off every week. He has two mm -hmm. days that he gets every week, but it could be any day of the week, uh, except Sunday. It's never Sunday. Oh. That sucks. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, it it really depends from week to week when he gets a day, but whenever he does, once Matt has moved in this new place, maybe we can make it work? Maybe. There's Thursdays, there's... Well, yeah, any day of the week, whenever it might align with everyone's schedules. But yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's why we have to figure it out, like, week by, by week. Basically, um, my only, like, weekday times that are like a no-go are like the evenings um mm -hmm. but like my like our regular time this uh yeah, this like one to five central is i think good for every day of the week uh that's until excellent. i have like a job situation change e once i evenings move but we'll see will never happen because for the europeans it will be the middle of the night for them right, uh, right. so that works yeah, all my other D, D stuff is all in the evenings so yeah, okay it doesn't yeah. conflict at all with a, with a bit of luck, we, the next session will, should take place in the middle of the week whenever everybody can attend. <laughs> um, and point of, uh, this... point of fact, Matt, if you still need a little bit of time to actually move into the new place, that's... No, no. Uh, totally, it's totally looking it. like we're going to be moving... Um, it's like a multiple day trip that we're going to have to do. So we're probably going to be leaving like early Saturday morning on the 30th. So not this coming Saturday, but the next one. And then hopefully we should be there and like moved like, you know, starting to move in and stuff on on that following Sunday on the 31st. So we probably won't won't do that one. But like after that, my entire like moving thing, I should have my my whole computer set up and everything okay. done like before the next time we would play. So I don't I might not even have to miss a session. All right. Hi. Awesome. Yeah, I, I hope that works out. Yeah. Would be nice to get back Assuming, to you know, my computer doesn't just explode into a billion no, pieces no, no, on the no, way. No, no, because, no, 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 Oh. Okay, I'm going to let Pip. you all go. When when Pip gets a little older, he's got one heck of a pickup line now. Hey, oh. baby, do you know I'm made of dreams? <laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> or at least I hallucinate. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. 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 Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Good